Uh, that also involves me uploading to YouTube afterwards and then uh, sending that link to you guys. So if you guys don't see the link to this uh, uh, lecture on uh, to YouTube, uh, then then let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to to send it out. Uh, it's it's probably it just slipped my mind because I have kind of a lot of stuff going on. Um, but yeah, so modeling, more modeling, right? Uh, we are going to be approaching this stuff differently, right? So, so a lot of our work was out of primitives and out of um, using like the extrude tool and the multi-cut tool. And they're great tools. They're great tools. And, and we're, I'm going to show you more about them today. But I want to I want to talk more about um, kind of kind of topology. Now, um, topology it's that word that I that I posted in there. It's basically I think the the actual like dictionary description is just like oh how you describe a surface in three D and that's that's completely true. But there's um, good topology and bad topology. Let me go to Google and there we go. You can already see. You can already see one of my last searches, uh, face topology, right? So the face is very complex shape, right? It's very complex shape. Um, in fact, it's probably the most complex shape on the body if, if we're talking about sheer modeling. Um, and we'll actually use frequently in the face more polygons. I wish this would buffer better, let's see. We use more polygons in the face than like the rest of the body, right? Like look, you have to like describe the nose and stuff and the nostril. And yeah, this is definitely a step up in uh, complexity than what we've previously tackled, right? Because we've just been messing around with, you know, basic extrusions and basic, um, basic modeling principles. But I really want to talk about how the, these are constructed. Now, these are great uh, infographics, you know, because like, it shows it shows you kind of how they are dividing up the surface. Now, this isn't going to make a lot of sense right now because we're I'm I'm just kind of pointing to these outlines, but I wanna I want you guys to be thinking about how these shapes, right? The sh these different colored shapes are kind of flowing into each other, right? How they're kind of sectioned off, right? Just. Just look at those, like look at how they're, they're kind of dividing up those complex features of the face and kind of simplifying that zone, you know? So um, essentially what those are, are areas that are considered edge loops, right? So I mentioned edge loops in last class, but I wanna talk more about edge loops and more about surfaces, right? So let's start, let's start talking about models, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a cube, a polygonal cube. I'm going to scale it up, you know, just get it a little bit bigger on that grid. And one of the big tenets, one of the big ideas of 3D is that you can make any object from a cube. Uh, that's why subdivision modeling or subdiv modeling is also commonly referred to as box modeling. Because they're, they're, the, the idea is that you could make a face out of this cube, right? Uh, it's just a matter of kind of subdividing that surface. Uh, and I would use my multi-cut. I'm going to hold control and middle click, you know, to get that nice cut of symmetry down the object. But I could eventually turn this cube into a face, right? If I get a little bit more definition in here, watch. If I start going into to vertex mode, and I'm not gonna model a whole face, right? Cause that's gonna be, that, that would take way too long, uh, longer than, than I have to devote to just showing you that. Um, let's get some symmetry going as well. But like you can slowly start to modify this surface, you know, boom moving these points and then let's get these moved inward a little bit. There we go. Do, do, do. But yeah, like it's just it's just a process of, of kind of slowly pecking away at the at the surface and kind of 
creating the shape that you want. Let's move this down for like the a jaw sort of shape. Let's move this out. Let's take this face, extrude it downward. Boom, there you go. Let's get this edge loop, move that kind of at the midpoint. It's multi-cut. We're gonna use this, scale it out a little bit. Those are gonna be our eyes. This is gonna be our mouth. So I'm gonna turn off symmetry so I can start extruding on this. Boom, there we go. And again, like I said, it's not, we're not, uh, I'm not going for anything nice looking right now. Um, in fact, this is very much the reason why, uh, why we uh, kind of use ZBrush, which is a sculpting program. Um, it's because this process takes a while, right, for, for a face. Uh, and it, you'll find that I'm right now thinking about how these shapes are flowing into each other, right, as I'm doing this on the fly. But in ZBrush, or, and, and that process is called topology, right? Like I'm thinking about how this surface is kind of moving into itself, right? Um, that, that process is topology. I'm trying to figure out geometry that's going to describe this shape well enough to get all the surfaces of the face in there, you know? And that's, that's something that we need to worry about after we craft our character. But uh, by using ZBrush, we're going to be focusing only on the form and the shape, and it's going to be very free flowing and make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, so that's just that's just kind of showing what I'm talking about, about uh, any any shape can be made from a box, right? So I just want that concept to sink in because we're going to be using that for um, for the homework. Um, and yeah, I know it, it does not look great. <laughs> <laughs> at all but you can see how like how you can start to slowly craft those shapes um let's start with something basic right because this is this is going to be something that you're going to encounter a lot um everyone make a cube for me everyone make a cube while you guys are if you guys haven't opened maya yet please open maya um and make one of those cubes i'm going to get a drink of water so my throat doesn't explode Okay, so everyone opened up Maya by now, hopefully. Uh, and you have a cube, all right? So uh, a common, just a, a real simple way of showing this idea is like, oh, if I wanted a cylinder, I could just click the cylinder button, right? Um, and that's fine. But if I wanted to make a cylinder out of this cube, how to do that, you know? So the secret is, uh, let's go into multi-cut mode, right? And I'm just going to control, I'm holding control, and I'm going to middle click, boom, there you go. And then I'm going to middle click again. And here we go. So you see, now we have a subdivided cube, right? We put subdivisions on it. We cut up the surface with polygons because we needed more polygons on the outside of this to give us more definition, right? So now what, what I can do is just select one edge and then shift select another edge, shift select this edge and shift select this last edge. So now I have all four edges of the cube selected. Oops, I accidentally deselected them. I'm just gonna press control Z to bring that selection back. Please do that. Please don't, please don't actually uh, deselect and then be like, oh, Okay, I have to reselect all of these, right? Like, don't do that. That's going to be very slow. You guys are going to go insane if you try to do that. So just remember that uh, Maya saves your selections. So if I just left click off here, I can just press Control Z, boom, get that back. But let's use. Uh, I, I could manually move these in with the Move tool by pressing W, and then just start moving these piece by piece. Here we go. You see that? That's like what we're going to do. And we're going to get a nice cylinder out of that. A 
nice cylinder. Um, but I got some problems with this. Like it's not like perfectly symmetrical. It's not, it's not like clean on all uh, sides like that. So let's undo that. Um, I want you guys to start thinking more about your different move, rotate, and scale tools, right? So if I select all of these edges again, right? If I don't, if I have those selected, I could just press R to scale. And then I could scale in on one axis and scale in on the other, right? So see how it's doing all of those at once. Like if you can ever, if you ever find yourself in a situation like that, like try to think outside uh, your, your normal, just like move tool, like kind of maybe, maybe try approaching it in a different way, you know, um, and you can get some nice results that way. Now you saw that I did both axes separate, the X and the Z. I could also, so see how the, these manipulators are going in and out and it's kind of pushing along that X axis and this is pushing along that Z axis. You can also grab these little middle boxes between the different axes. You see these? And that's going to scale on two axes. Or if I go into move tool, it's going to move on two different axes. So see how it's not moving up and down at all? It might look like it right there. It looks like I moved it up, but if I go from the side view, boom, those are still staying on the same uh, Y plane, right? Um, but the same goes for scaling. So if I scale on this, it's gonna pull in on both X and Z. See those X and Z manipulators pulling in and out at the same time, but Y is remaining the same. So that's a very nice concept to, to grasp. And then boom, you got a nice, a nice cylinder right there, right? Very nice cylinder. So that's very cool. And you can always uh, subdivide it more. I'm going to add some more multi cuts. Again, I'm just pressing Control and middle clicking there, and then I can start grabbing grabbing these edges again. Do scale. I can kind of hit an even smoother surface there, right? So I can get a nice smooth surface. There you go, and boom. So that's looking cool. Uh, however, you know, it, it doesn't, you don't want to go that subdivided to start off with, right? We're going we're to be working with general basic shapes. You always start big and then go small, you know? So uh, I just wanted to show you guys that you can make pretty much anything from a cube to start with. A cube is like basically my go-to object whenever I'm modeling something. Now topology is something completely different because topology is going to be, it, it honestly, it, it was a concept that took me years to fully grasp, right? Because it is, it is exactly what Jesse was talking about. It is a massive puzzle. It's a massive puzzle. Now, for these puzzles, we get to cheat a little bit, right? Because we have a lot of resources that we can look at. One of my favorites, I showed it to you guys uh, last week is sketchfab.com. I'm going to link to that in chat. And on sketchfab.com, you can explore characters and creatures. And there's just a bunch of cool uh, resources here, essentially. I'm trying to find like a human that I think would have decent topology. Some of these like higher res ones might look good, but then when we examine the topology, let's see what what it looks like it's looking like this might be some 3d scan data or something let's see which might be cool because that'd be a good example of bad topology let's see yeah so my friends this is awful topology this is absolutely disgusting topology right um so do not model like this <laughs> do not model like this at all um does anyone just off the bat, does anyone know why this is bad topology? We haven't really gone much into that yet, but does anyone have any inkling of why this is bad topology? There's a lot of triangles. Yeah, yeah. that was my first guess as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very good guess, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much entirely triangles. And what this is most, what this most likely is, is like scan data 
um, that then got, uh, what is it called, uh, decimated. So uh, the decimation process reduces your geo to triangles. And it's great for poly count, like it's going to save on poly count, but uh, you can't really animate with that because it would look super jagged as that as that character's moving around and as those different vertices are getting pulled, you know. So it's gonna it's gonna look real real weird if you try to animate that. Also, if you try to select any of these edges, it's gonna get real annoying, right? Like if if I was like, oh, I want to get that jawline to be kind of just a little bit little bit extended out right you'd have to like go in edge by edge and select that instead if you have clean topology right boom so if i'm using quads on this right see how this edge loop goes all around the middle section if that was the quote unquote jaw you know that i wanted to extend boom just in edge mode double click that and it selects that so that's why we use good topology is because it's it one will render better it'll be animating better uh, it'll be easier to rig, and it'll be 100% easier to select. Um, so let's try to find a model with some some delicious topology. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, I want to ask: Could you show us something, or how? What would be the consequence of you know having triangles, and like if you were to extrude it and stuff like that? Could you? Show okay. Yeah. 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 Like so let me example? let me just cut up my surface a little bit here. Yeah, make it ugly. Make like it terrible. ugly, exactly. <laughs> so let's get some triangles in here. Now Maya has gotten better at messing around with triangles, but uh, look at this. See how if I double click that edge, see how it terminates there? It no longer selects these edges. So it's gonna be real annoying when we're uh, doing a step called UVing, which involves kind of cutting up the surface. Um, so that's why we don't use triangles for, for modeling. Um, but don't get me wrong. Using triangles is completely fine, um, but you, you wanna usually hide them, right? So in a place that's not gonna be as visible, like you can hide them in like the ear or like uh, if, you're, if you're terminating edge loops, which is a concept that we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. But say, say I have a bunch of edge loops, boom, on this, and I wanna simplify it. Uh, sometimes you can, uh, you can simplify by using triangles. So essentially if I target, well, if like, if I needed a, only two spans up here, boom, I can do this. Boom. So those are triangles, but they're simplifying the geometry. So now there's only, uh, two edges up on top as opposed to four at this level, you know, um, I'm going to show you guys ways to do that and not use triangles, right? So uh, since I'm here, I might as well do it right now. But like, uh, if I wanted only two edges on top, let's see, how could we do that? How could we do that? So usually when I'm encountering up, this is where like the, the, the big puzzle comes into play uh, because you basically need to reroute your geometry in order to do that. And you need to use your, your modeling tools to do that. So let's, let's get this. I'm gonna move these inward a little bit. And then just to kind of curve the surface so you, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then, oops, not target weld all those. I'm just gonna click on one point to refresh my selection. So it only welds that one. Boom, there we go. See that? So I'm not using, tri I'm using triangles right here, but let's just target weld all these. Boom, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Boom, so same, same uh, result, right, with this two edges on top, but then four across the bottom. Um, so, but I, in this way, I'm using only quads, right? So if we count up these surfaces, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four points on that one, one, two, three, four verts on that one. One, two, three, four. So, so that's how that's how you can solve those sorts of problems. That's where that's where the uh, T triangle T equals trick. <laughs> I like it. I like it. True. Um, and yeah, uh, eventually you guys will get like a sixth sense for when you see a triangle on your mesh. Uh, but again, that just takes time. It's going to take a little bit of time to develop that that spidey sense right there. 
Uh, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, I, I do hope you guys enjoy puzzles because it really is. It really does end up being a puzzle. Um, but yeah, uh, now this has altered our edge flow, right? So I was, I was going to talk about edge flow in a, in a little bit, but I might as well just move it to this point because like, you know, we're already here. We're already here. So my edge flow right here, it's pretty visible if you're, if you're in the multi-cut tool. And so I like doing that. Uh, if I hold control, see that edge flow, it's just going across the shape right there, right? It's just going across the shape. Now, oops, sorry about that. Uh, now here, since we did this little target welding to make this shape and reduce the, the poly count up there, if we hold control down here, notice how I have a different edge flow. See that? See how it's not cutting across the surface? Now here on this one, boom, that's still going across the surface. But here, the, that edge flow is getting redirected. Now, what's cool about these face topology examples is that their edge flow is oriented to describe the facial features. See how it's, it, that this edge is kind of following that little crease that's, that goes off the nose right there? Um, see how this, these concentric circles are essentially the, the mouth right there. It's, it's kind of just outlining that shape, right? And one, the, the reason that we do that is one, because it's easy to select, right? So I can just, I can double click any of those edges and it would select all that, that edge loop right there. Um, another reason we do it is because at animation time, that's gonna like once we start posing that character around, like that mouth could be a lot more malleable then, right? Um, it'll be a lot, a lot more malleable. Same with these, uh, same with these little, uh, what is it? Like it's almost like an Incredibles mask shape for the eyes. We're gonna use that sort of setup for uh, to describe that that ocular cavity right there. You know, like that, that the the place where your eye sits. Like that's what this edge loop is describing. That's why it's there. Now these, the, uh, these eyelids, since there's gonna be a lot of blinking in there, we need geometry um, to describe that. Otherwise it's gonna, you're gonna see some of those verts get pulled a little bit too far, right? So that's what, um, that's what we're looking for. This guy's looking a little bit cursed, but you know, still fine, still fine. Um, and you'll notice that primarily on these, it, it's mostly uh, mostly quads. So I want you guys to try to describe your shapes with quads as much as possible. Um, and we're going to use a tool that's really cool for that in the future. Um, but for now, we're going to be using regular modeling techniques. So it's going to be a little bit arduous, but you know, it's part of the growing pains of learning learning 3D. And you guys will be much better for it. Um, but yeah. So that's, that's like kind of an intro to topology and edge loops and why we, why we use them and what they describe. Now, even though I've said that information, a lot of that's not gonna sink in until you get your hands in it and start messing around with it. Because it, like I said, it took me, took me a lot of years to sort of understand what these shapes were doing and how I could influence them, you know? But, uh, but yeah. So, I have a question. so yeah, absolutely. I tried making the cylinder out of the cube and I feel like I selected the same edges as you did, but when I go to like move them around, it seems like they're stuck on the center like vertex and like they just rotate around that and they don't like go inward. Oh, are you using the rotate tool? No, I'm, I'm pressing W and I'm using the little arrows, but um, oh, oh, uh, no. Remember how I said that if you're on W and you start moving them, they're going to do this. Okay. You know? so uh, in, you instead, you can, you can use scale. So remember our scale tool? Now, oh. that, that's this one. If you press R, okay. it's going it's to activate scale tool. And it's going to go like this, right? So it's going to scale up that. You know, it's going it's to make it larger. But if, if you guys break it down in your minds to the different axes, if we go on the red and the blue, you can make that sort of cylinder shape right there. Oh, so you're, okay. So you're using the scale tool, not W. Not W, yeah, that, that was okay. the key there, yeah. Is okay. it working now? Uh, yeah, okay. Nice. Now. Yeah, sorry. Heck yeah, that's what I like to hear. But yeah, so, so I, just, I was just showing you guys that example because I wanna, like when I'm modeling, I'm not 
only using the, the move tool. I've noticed students commonly do that. And it, while, while the move, move tool is amazing, like it doesn't solve everything, right? So, all right. So does that, does that brief intro to topology make sense? We're, we're, our, our goal is to describe it, uh, a surface in quads and with edge loops and edge direction right here that, that is gonna be nice and easy to work with. Um, we're also, oh, one thing I didn't mention that I should is that we wanna to try to keep an even spacing of polygons on our, on our object. See how this face, we wanna get some detail in there. Most of these quads are similar size. Now, some of them have to be smaller. Like look at that like tear duct in there. That's gotta be smaller, right? Cause it's just gonna be impossible to describe otherwise. Like you need the verts there, but for the most part, pretty pretty even polygon size now you can also see that things get a little bit uh, a little bit more sparse on the body it's because the body doesn't need as much to describe it but uh but yeah so like i said topology is gonna be really hard to to grasp um because honestly there's no one right way to do it there's a bunch of right ways um but there are definitely wrong ways as well so and you guys you guys will fall uh, victim to some wrong ways during the homework. That is to be expected, don't, don't worry. Um, but yeah, this skill is, is important to, to get them. Um, all right, so don't worry, we will come back to topology in the future. Um, this is by no means the last time I'm bringing it up. We will, we will discuss topology a lot, um, but yeah. I, I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. About like redirecting edge loops. Yeah. Because is there sometimes, um, I guess, mistakes where you're like, oh, I want it to go in this direction, but then you mess up? Or is it pretty self explanatory on where you want the edge loop to go? The, the, like, how do you redirect edge loops, basically, is what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More on that, absolutely. Let's let's do let's let's give a little bit more <laughs> for, for this example. Boom. So you see this. Uh -huh. Um, I would like everyone to actually do this with me. Um, just because I'm going to go over some selection stuff here, so so I can I can show you guys how to select a lot of features at once because it's gonna be useful in a little bit. Um, okay, so everyone create a default plane right here. And it might come in on a wrong axis. So if it's doing that, we can just rotate it. Remember if you press E and hold J, you can then snap rotate it to um, the different sides, you know? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that flat with the surface also. Uh, let's see. You can also go into the, the options for it by double clicking the button, boom. And then doing reset settings and then that'll set it to Y and then you can create it like that. Boom. So we have this plane and I just wanna talk about selecting, right? Cause there's a lot of ways that we can, like selecting is gonna be a lot of the time spent modeling because you need to select the verts, right? And it's going to be uh, annoying, uh, but it's very important. So a fast way of selecting some things, if you have an empty edge, right? So if I, if I have like, you see how there's no geometry connected to this outer edge at all. If I go into edge mode, boom, and double click that, see how it just automatically selects the outside of that? It's gonna be super awesome and useful. Um, same goes for like in, inside stuff. So see how I just selected a bunch of faces and pressed delete. Now, if I go into edge mode and double click that edge, boom, it still, it still selects that. It still selects that edge of that, that shape that I deleted out of the, out of the geo, right? So those, are, so those are some cool edge options. Now, remember, uh, if I have an edge that's just going through all of these four pointed intersections right here, like this, I can double click that and it'll select that whole one, right? 
And then, so that's going to be kind of a, a, a nice concept of topology when we're getting into it, uh, because you want to be able to select big features with just the, the uh, with a double click. Like that's going to be really cool to, to be able to do. Um, now we can also do that, like a similar thing in our different modes of selection. And when I'm talking about different modes of selection, I'm talking about like when you hold right click and you go into vertex mode, you know, and hold right click and when you go into face mode. So we can, we can also get faster selection in these, in these modes as well. And I want you guys to be using it. So the way we do that is if you hold right click and go into vertex mode, if I wanted to do something similar to this. Like if I wanted to select this whole edge, but if I wanted to, if I was just in vert mode and I wanted to select like that, uh, what I can do is click one vert, boom. So I left clicked that vert and I'm gonna shift double click this vert, boom, see that? So now it selects that whole line of verts. So I want you guys to get used to that. So click one vert, shift double left click the other verts. Now, if I, if I target welds and stuff in here, boom, like that. And if I left click that vert, then shift double left click, see how it terminates at that triangle. That's why that's kind of why we don't want to use triangles when we're modeling. It's gonna it's gonna cause some problems for us, right? So now uh, let me undo that welding right there. Uh, that same rule applies for face mode, right? So if I left click one face, and then if I shift double left click on another face, see how it selects that entire edge or that entire edge loop of faces. So that's really useful. It's a very useful tool. Um, it, it selects both ways, right? So if I start from the middle and I shift double left click to the next, like see how it gets that entire edge loop right there. Now, uh, something else with faces, let me delete this, boom. If I double click a face, it's gonna select everything that's connected to it. Right? It's going to select all the other faces that are connected to it. See how I deleted out of this polygon object. See how I deleted that span of faces. Like it's it's it, now it's not going to select that. If I double click this one, it's going to get all of that hole. Right. So that's just some selection uh, speed up right there. Uh, very useful stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so so just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now to redirect edge flow, right? See how my current edge flow is going straight across, straight across, straight across, straight across. So it's straight across right there. But say I wanted it to instead link over to this, like, like right here. If I wanted it to like select across and kind of curve across this shape, right? What I could do, it's essentially target welding is going to be helping us out there, right? So if I go into target weld mode, Boom, I'm gonna kind of connect that there. And I'm gonna connect this one here. So now let me turn off the grid actually, so you guys can see just the geo. My computer crashed. Okay, all right, let me, let me undo this. Uh, Lilia has brought to our attention uh, one of the biggest tenants of 3D and that's to save and save as, uh, please, like every 15 minutes, guys, go to file, save scene as, because it's, Maya's going to crash. Like it's not a, it's not an if, it is a when, because Maya will do its best to crash. Um, and it's because it's such a complex program. Like there's a lot of crazy things going on. You guys, I'm sure have had Photoshop crash on you. And that's just 2D. They only got two dimensions in there. Maya's doing a bunch more stuff under the hood than, than Photoshop. So. So please make sure you, you save scene as, um, and you might be like, oh, I'll just save scene. Uh, don't do that because when you do save scene, it is saving your work, right? But it's essentially saving over that file that you're working in, right? Um, I have had a, uh, I've had a crash happen when I was saving and then it corrupted that file. So I could no longer open that file. Uh, I lost, you know, 16 hours of work. That's not going to be like, that's not fun, <laughs> especially when you're at a, working at a big studio and that happens. So it's not that your boss isn't going to be like, oh, that's cool. Uh, thank you, Mike, for being 16 hours behind on your, on your deadline now. 
um, is yeah, it's not acceptable. So please do save scene as save scene as every day, um, or every time, you know, like you're going to end up with a bunch of files, but that's fine. You'll just have some hard drive space taken up. You know, it's, it's better than losing hours of work, especially when you're like crunching for the final, because this is going to happen. This is going to happen every semester. There's at least like one student that's like, oh, my thing crashed. And I'm like, are you saving as? Because if you were, then it wouldn't be a big deal. You'd be like, oh, I'm just going to get back that 15 minutes of work that I lost. You know? So that's going to happen. Please, please be saving constantly. All right. So back to this. Sorry for that sidetrack. It's just very important. I, I'm going to reiterate that throughout the semester. Um, if we wanted to redirect this edge flow, Currently, boom, it's going across. See that? If I left click and then shift double left click right there, it's going straight across. However, if I go into target weld and then if I left click, drag this vert on this other one and drag this one right there, see how that makes kind of an L shape in that structure right there now? This diagonal allows us to select that way. See how that edge loop is getting redirected there? across now these are broken right because this is this is a triangle uh so to fix that we'd also have to reduce our poly count over here boom now i'm just gonna i'm just using target weld in edge mode and i'm gonna do vert mode for this but now we have that that cool edge flow right there see that see that does that not make sense to anyone because i'm i'm more than happy to to explain that more how did you select the L shape? Oh, so I just left clicked this face and then shift double left clicked in the face next to it. So see see how I oh, left click this face oh, okay. and shift double left click that one. So it gets that whole edge right there. Now, oh, I'm trying to sneeze. And you just deleted the other, I guess, edges to get rid of the triangles. Yep, I, I basically just target welded them into the, the other one, but you could oh. definitely have, let me go control Z back into here. Yeah, you could definitely just click those and then delete them. Remember that it's if you don't hold control when you delete, it's not going to delete the verts. So see how we still have those verts in there? Right, right, right. So be careful for that. Uh, so if you hold control and delete, boom, it takes it takes the the verts with it when you're in edge okay. mode like that. So then the best way is just to target weld. The um, edges. no, I, either either way works. I would say like, I would say in fact, um, I would say deleting it could be faster, right? So if I go into edge mode, and if I do left click and then shift double left click to this edge, it's going to select only to that edge. I'm going to, if I make a bunch of these, right? If I just extend that out and then I multi-cut it up a bunch, boom. So say I wanted to resolve this triangle, right? Now there's other ways that I could probably do it by like butchering up this surface. For instance, I could cut right here and then Cut right here, boom. Now this is also a quad right there. So I, I solved it that way, but then I have like more geometry now, right? And then I also have to fix this one, you know? So the, there's gonna be some problems there. Uh, if I wanted to fix it by target welding, uh, it would take a while, right? Cause I'd be, target welding one at a time you know right so so it, i just had that i the, the thing the reason i did that is because i had the target weld ready and you guys know what target weld does so mm -hmm. i wanted to just kind of get that to you guys but if, if i wanted to do this fast i would just click one edge then shift double click the, the other edge oh you could just double click that edge in general and then control delete boom and then do the same here so that that's that's probably the fastest way to do it right there but Again, that's not going to be a cure all for like every scenario. Like you're going to encounter some scenarios that like it might not work because of the topology, you know. So right. So just be aware because, of that. Because now you're seeing a rectangle instead of squares, and it, wouldn't that be an issue to the topology? It it not? would it would uh, the um one reason that that might not matter is because this is a, a flat surface right now. 
-hmm. but like on a curved surface that could be very much uh visible so if if i was to sort of try to fix that i would probably do this right here and then just get these evenly spaced and move them over like that so that's probably how i'd, I'd fix that you know okay um but then these are bent you know so it's it's gonna you're gonna have some some issues no matter what but i just wanted to show you guys <laughs> mostly diverting the geometry okay. there okay. um and then uh yeah so that's pretty cool um that helps that helps yeah i, I hope so i hope so please uh hit me up with your topology questions whenever my friends because uh yeah you will have a lot of questions about it i'm sure um but yeah uh while we're here i'd like everyone to use a new tool that we have not used yet a very new tool so everyone select select an edge loop uh like a select a a, a stream of faces right here like that so left click one face and then shift double left click another face. So do that and then press delete. Boom. Now say that we wanted to get that back together. We're like, oh man, I, I like, I wanted this to be connected. You know, uh, what we can do is control E to extrude on this edge and then target weld and be like, yes, we got it. Oh, wait, yes, cool. We're doing it. We're getting this fixed up easily. Uh, however, however, there's a much quicker way to do this. Much quicker way. So make sure you undo your extrude if you're following along with that. Um, a really cool tool that we have is called Bridge right here, Bridge. Uh, creates bridging faces between selected edges or faces. So if I select those two edges right there and do bridge, boop, look at that. Just makes a new little, new little uh, polygon face right there for us. So if I select three on this side and three on this side and then do bridge, boom, it's going to connect up like that. Now, if you have an uneven amount of faces or an uneven amount of edges selected on one side to the other and then try to bridge it's going to give you this big red air it's like dude what are you what are you doing poly bridge requires equal number of border edges to be selected for the source and target depth of selection um this is a great time to explain to you guys that this little this little line down here is going to tell us a lot of important information because if you're seeing red down here then there's an error going on of some sort right and if an error is happening, it usually uh, will say what's kind of creating that problem. Uh, and you can then select that and then control copy and then like just Google that problem. That's like honestly that method of just seeing whatever error is happening in here and then copy pasting that into Google is like how I solve a lot of the problems that I I uh, don't know how to solve when I'm like encountering them, right? Because Maya's Maya's smart in some ways, I'll say, uh, and it will tell you like what's going wrong. Uh, sometimes it'll pop up a, a yellow warning if something else is like happening. Yellow warnings aren't that bad. It means that like there's uh, there's something that that could potentially cause problems in the future, but they're not they're not like a hundred percent gonna mess your scene up or anything, you know. Um, but yeah, so back to bridge, back to bridging. So it, it just bridges across if you have the same amount of edges select, right? And sorry, my, my computer's going slow because it's recording to the to the computer itself. It always slows down when it's doing that. Um, but if we combine that with uh, the technique of in edge mode, so remember how if you double click, it's gonna select that entire edge loop right there, right? Um, if we want to isolate that, we could also hold control and see how my, my cursor now becomes like the opposite of that. It's, it means that it's going to take away from that selection. I can start to left click on these face uh, on these edges and it's going to remove them from the selection. So that's a fast way to sort of remove 
edges, right? Or remove anything from your selection. Like if you had a bunch of faces, you could do the same thing. Um, however, in edge mode, I like to, like if I'm encountering this sort of problem, I can left click that, that top edge right here. So that's now highlighted orange. And then I'm gonna shift, double left click this bottom one. So it's a little bit backwards from the other method of just uh, left clicking one and then shift double left clicking the next one in, the, in that sequence to get that whole row. It's a little bit opposite, you know, uh, but it's a little bit more precise. Like you can you can get your selection to be any amount of edges in there, you know. So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to use that method on here to just select all of these edges and then boom, simple bridge. So it's just a fast way of doing that. And we'll go more over it. Uh, we'll go over this more in the future, but. Uh, what when we're talking about the homework because this is on the homework um but yeah so there's that there's that um so what do we learn we learned a bunch of selection stuff a bunch of uh diverting edge flow um and we learned some bridge we learned some nice bridge so i want to talk more about edge flow before we move on um or does anyone have any, any questions about bridge? All righty. Um, so we have some more examples here. Uh, I want to talk about extrude. Extrude does some interesting things in terms of topology. I wish I knew this for the last assignment. <laughs> Yeah, I just figured it was too much to throw at you guys in one day, you know, because like you, just, you haven't even looked at the, the Maya interface, you know. Um, but yeah, so so let's go in and uh, I want to extrude this shape. Let's make like a weird shape here. Let's make a weird shape. And I'm going to click extrude. Now, when I click extrude, it's going to pop open a menu here that has a lot of different parameters in here. Now, anytime that you see this sort of menu, like this free floating menu, it's going to give you options on like what you can do with that tool, right? Because this is the extrude face uh, tool that we're just using right there. And so you can do thickness. Like if I drag on this, boom, see it's popping it out there. So that's super cool. Right, what was the, the hotkey for extrude? Oh, control E. Control E, okay. Yeah, control E. Or I think it's command E on a Mac, if you're on a Mac. Um, but yeah, so there, there's thickness right there. And notice how it, it's like, it, it's a little bit intense, right? It's like, I can't even really get it to be like very precise. So if you want precision and you're, when you're left click dragging on these, on these words, uh, what you can do is can, uh, hold control and shift and then left click drag, see that? So you get a lot more precision there, a lot more precision. And so that, that's my favorite way. Otherwise you have to like click in this box and be like, I want a thickness of one. And it's just like, it, that's, not a, that's not conducive to quick iteration. Like I wanna be like, oh, if I just wanted like a small amount of lip there, Control shift and then yeah, and then just left click drag on this on this word and it's going to be a lot easier. Um, and another really cool one is offset. I love offset. See this? Let's reduce the thickness to zero so you can see what offset's doing. See how it's shrinking in on the on the shape there? Super cool tool. Super cool. Um, now let's look at what that did. So this was this is an extrusion, right? Now extrusions are great for like creating outcroppings, right? Uh, but another use of them is to kind of create more detail, right? So now this this surface is a bit more detailed in this area, and also what it does for us is it's created an edge loop around our selection. See that? Ooh, that's power. Now that's power right there, my friends. So that shape now has the this little edge loop kind of defining it. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. That, that's that's the coolness of that's probably not gonna sink in for a while, you know. Um, 
it might not ever sink in. Maybe I'm just a like a nerd and it, it, I'm really into it, you know, but you know, that's just my own thing. But uh, so that's just a, another really cool feature of extrusions. And I want you guys to be thinking about like what shapes you'd extrude out of something to, to sort of create another shape. So let's, well, while we're talking about topology and shapes, let me show you kind of breaking down how I go about modeling a shape. Cause like I'm showing you like the steps, you know, but I don't, I, it, it's hard to communi communicate my like thought process as I'm like doing it because, you know, I'm just used to doing it a lot. So uh, I used to have a homework assignment where we needed to model a uh, wooden, wooden spoon. Oh no, my computer's going so slow. There you go. One of these wooden kitchen spoons, right? Because you guys kind of need to get into the, uh, the, let's find one with like a cool ridge around it. You know, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. this one's looking pretty cool. The lighting's kind of donkey here on that. Uh, I can't really see much good, what's going on. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this one's looking nice and defined and, and basic. So um, let's click on that. Oh no, I'm on a cooking website now, it looks like, or something. Uh, let's open image in new tab. Oh, there we go. So this is our spoon. This is our little spoon. So if I wanted to model this, it's a pretty, pretty basic model, but it has some features to it, right? It has some features. Now let me get out my stylus. Let's see, this is going to be working nice. Okay, let me get out the snipping tool. Boom. So essentially, the, the, the question is like, what is my approach when I'm modeling this, right? So I first start out by sort of thinking about the features of it, right? So I have this this hard outline, right? So I know just based on geometry, based on like ver like how vertexes work, that I'm gonna have to have vertexes along or vertices along the outside of this shape, right? Gotta have some verts there. Gotta have verts defining that, that edge. I'm gonna have verts defining this little crease right here as well, you know? Like, so it's gonna have a little bit of that, that, that crease on that edge right there. So that's great. I, know, I now know what that shape is like, right? Now, to define this little, this little, uh, what is it? Like the, 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 the dip in the, in the uh, spoon. That's a hard edge, right? I need verts along that as well, right? I need verts along that, describing that surface. Boom. Right? So I know I already have essentially two edge loops right here, right? Drawn out. And that's kind of the, the approach that you take whenever you look at a 3D object or a, a, at an object in real life, you know? Like, and this is probably gonna break your brain a little bit because you're gonna start looking at things around your house and be like, how, how would I make that chair? You know, how would I make that cup? You know, like, so things are gonna start, you're gonna start looking at things differently. But now we need to figure out like how to create these shapes, right? Because I just I just drew some edge loops, but you, there's no there's no connective tissue there, right? So another feature that I want to talk about is uh, this is a symmetrical object, right? Like the this spoon is it's not symmetrical this way, right? It's not symmetrical across this axis. It's symmetrical across this one, right? So right here on these sides, that's going to be symmetrical. So I need a line of symmetry going across the shape and sorry i'm trying to be precise about this but the snipping tool is not the most robust drawing tool um there we go so we're having a line of symmetry across this 
And I'm gonna kind of dip this in to sort of simulate the dish of that spoon in there. You know, I know it doesn't, it's not that dipped from this perspective, you know, but I just wanna exaggerate that. All right, so we're making some progress there, right? We're making some progress. So now we have that kind of lined up. Let's extend this, let's extend this edge all the way down, right? Because we need we need geometry describing the outside of it. We need it. We need to be describing that. And then there's also geometry describing the bottom of this shape right here. So I'm going to be going all the way down. Boom. And then there's a little ridge right here. So let's get some geometry right there. And I'm just drawing across that, right? So now, next up, I'm noticing a sort of taper right here along the neck. You see that? It kind of tapers out. Now I can't just do that with no geometry, right? There would have to be at some point edge loops around here, right? There would have to be an edge loop around there kind of pinching that that's this long straight shape. And then there'd have to be another edge loop sort of flaring out here, right? Another one flaring out there to, to kind of give it that, that sort of curve shape, that sort of curve. Now I'm encountering the problem of like, oh, how do I connect this up? You might want to just draw across. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but like, you might want to draw from this point right here to the base of that, but then you're going to get a triangle, right? It's going to be a triangle. Ugh, disgusting. We don't want triangles here. How dare you? How dare you? So instead, what we can do is cut across right here, right? So if we cut across here, boom, then I'm like, oh, now I'm getting kind of a plan of attack, right? So in this to make this like orbital dish shape we're going to need more geometry here you know how we're using these these edge loops to kind of flare out we're going to use edge loops right here to, to maintain that that width of that geometry right boom to get that width now i'm going to might as well just add some more right it's just going to get it's just going to get a uh to be a smoother shape if we do Right, so let's put more across here. Let's do, wh whenever you cut something across like this, you wanna have a similar, you wanna have the same amount of edge loops on like the, on both halves of that cut that you make, you know? So like, it's gonna be symmetrical this way and then it's gonna have the same number of edge loops on this side as well. So let's get that in there. Boom, and then now we can start cutting out here, right? So see how, if I get a cut like that, then that edge flow, that edge flow is kind of going around this shape right here. See that? So if I left click this face and then shift double left click this face, boom, it's gonna be rerouted by the, these little diagonal guys right there. So that's, that's how that shape's happening. And uh, if we go ahead and kind of complete these shapes in here, Boom, that if I'm just cutting across to define that scoop, boom, there we go. And then we can also get, um, we can get some, some more in there. Uh, in fact, for this, like, cause this would technically be a triangle right here. If we instead push it to a point like that and then push that across, and then put it right there and right there. And then reroute it all the way down to this one again. Boom, all quads right there. So that's kind of like what's going through my mind as I'm making these. And it's not always apparent, right? It's definitely not always apparent. That's why I start with the biggest shapes first. And uh, we could do we could do this a few ways, but let's let's do this in Maya now, right? Let's do this in Maya. Um, I'm going to use a program called PureRef so I can keep that um, 
so I can keep this image. Let's see, can I just copy that and then paste it in here? Oh, there we go. And PureRef's super sick. We're going to use it when we're sculpting, or I'm going to recommend that you use it when we're sculpting. Um, but yeah, let's minimize that. Uh, and essentially, it's just like whatever you click on, it's just going to stay on top of that, that panel, right? It's just going to stay there. So I use it a lot for reference when I'm drawing or when I'm sculpting. I'll just keep like a reference board right here, and you can zoom in and zoom out, and you can right click and kind of move it around. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about creating this spoon, right? Now, everything, sorry, weird Tetris block, we're going to delete you. Um, everything can be created from a cube, right? Everything from a cube. So let's create a cube. Boom. And feel free to do this along with me. Feel free. Um, I'm going to multi cut this cube. Right. I guess it, to, to make it easier to, to visualize, we start big, right? We start big. So let's let's just get that general shape in there first. Right. So I'm just going to scale that cube up. And I'm just trying to make this big stick shape. Right. So let's scale it down a little bit and scale it in like this. Yeah. Boom. There we go. So now we basically have the the length of the spoon now we could we could bring this even further and i'm just going to select those verts and push them um and then let's start multi-cutting right so i'd say the first ones that we put in were uh the line of symmetry right here so let's put the line of symmetry in so now we have long long rectangle and i'm going to hold control and remember to get it directly in the middle control and middle click Boom, see that? See how even though my cursor was over here, like it was gonna create a, a, a multi-cut right there, it just, boom, middle, uh, control plus middle click just puts it straight in the center of that. Um, so that's fantastic, I love that. Um, and then let's go in and start creating the edge loops here for like the, the kind of expanding of that spoon. Boom, boom. Boom. So I just I just cut it up a little bit right there. And then now I'm going to select that entire, I can do this in edge mode as well. I'm going to select that entire edge loop. I'm going to press R and scale it out. Boom. Look at that. Spoon's coming to life, y'all. Spoon is coming to life. Let's take this one. Let's bow this out as well. There we go. So now we have like primordial spoon shape, you know? It's not like it doesn't look perfect, but it's fine. Now, next up is uh, I kind of want to get I want to define this shape a little bit more, right? So let's take these edges right here and um, feel free to activate symmetry if you have it available. Oh, it looks like I'm not working on object X. Let's see, object Z, does that work? Nice, yeah. So it looks like object Z is what I was doing. Normally, uh, you want to be modeling stuff along the uh the along the the z axis so object x will be your primary mode of symmetry but i, I messed up there sorry about that y'all uh, and i'm just going to use symmetry to sort of get that into position then i'm going to multi-cut this kind of just define the roundness of that spoon right and let's multi-cut this one as well just getting that round spoon shape perfect Perfection. Okay. So does anyone know how I'm going to make this lip? Like notice how I have that edge loop that's going around the, the outside of this, of this shape right there. See that? Like if you select that one, it would just keep going around right there. Any ideas on how to make that? It is one of the many features that I showed today, not not just uh, tricking you guys. Is it the target weld on the vertices? Um, you could potentially make it through via target welding, but there's a much better tool for the job. Multi-cut. 
you could also multicast. Oh, sorry, I spoke over someone. What was that? A scale and extrude. Ah, there we go. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. So let me let me show you guys with multicut how we would do this. Um, so it'd be it it it'd be a little bit of a process. I'd have to like kind of manually cut this shape. So see how I'm see how I'm just defining that shape right there. And then I'd have to like I want you guys to realize that when like you can cut across the surface like that all you want, but just be sure that you're plugging up your your end gons, right? Like this is like a six-sided face now. Or wait, no. One, two, three, four. It's like a 10-sided face. Disgusting. Um, we don't want that. Wait, no, no. I'm right. It is six sided. Yeah. So so we can just we make sure you make sure you uh make sure you multi-cut and resolve those, right? So now those are quads right there. So I'm just cutting across diagonally. So that works, right? That definitely works. But Yarin was was even more on the money because remember in my plane example how I selected any shape on this and then I uh, extruded and then I offset those. What those create is, is basically geometry there. Oh, sorry, my symmetry is messing around with some stuff. Whoops. Um, oh, let's undo the poly extrude and let's, und let's stop symmetry. There we go, cool. Um, so remember extrude plus scale is gonna make an edge loop around that surface, right? Makes that edge loop there. So that that's, that's a nice way of creating this lip, then, right? Boom, look at that. Sorry, one second, my picture's lagging. If I extrude, and I like using the offset for this. Offset is a fantastic tool. Boom, look at that. We just get that free, uh, free edge loop right there that defines that shape. Now I can turn um, symmetry back on, but first, notice what uh, notice the other shapes that I have. Does anyone see? Well, do we have to turn it off <laughs> to extrude? Um, so uh, are you you're talking about symmetry? Yes. Uh, not all the time. So watch mm -hmm. what happens here. If I do symmetry object X. Oh wait, no, sorry, object Z because I messed up. Like I can select these and then I can extrude and pull those out. So that's, that's fair. It looks like one of those like Mickey Mouse lollipop things or something. Um, so that works. But if you're extruding across the line of symmetry, sometimes Maya just messes up. You know, I've noticed that it's, it just seems to be a, a, a weird bug in there somewhere um, if you have symmetry involved. So be careful for that, you know. All right. <clears throat> so next up, I want to get that dish shape going in right here, right? And I might as well do it on the bottom as well, just to get two birds with one stone. So if I extrude, let me turn off symmetry just in case. A lot of times you can extrude and it'll be fine, but I've had I've had situations where it's not. So let's let's work on let's push this offset in. And then I'm just gonna, I could do thickness, right? To kind of push that in, but notice how the underside is also pushing in that, that same or the opposite way, you know? So I'm just gonna use my move tool. Boom, good old move tool. It's always there for us. It's always there for us. Perfect. So next up, I wanna just move this. See how, see how these polygons are getting super stretched right there? Like that one's like super skinny. That ain't good topology. Not at all, let's, let's, let's get those more evenly spaced, right? Let's get those evenly spaced. There we go, now let's move this, like that, get a little bit more rounded, right? So there we go, so now Spoon is looking, it's looking better for sure. It's looking a lot better. Um, next, I wanna get this edge kind of moving into like this, this round shape, right? So I'm gonna get a multi-cut along the side here. So let's, boom, put that in. 
And then essentially what's happening is that these, these edges are kind of coming together. So let's turn on symmetry again, object Z. Right there. And then they're getting rounded at this, at this junction. There we go. So now it's getting round and boom. It's looking good, looking good. Um, I'd also say if we move this edge back like this way a little bit, that's going to simulate the dip in or the, this little round part right here a little bit more. Um, we can also expand this. So if I turn off, if I try to scale, I basically want this to be a bigger bowl, you know? If I try to uh, scale with symmetry, it's going to use this as the pivot point. We don't want that as much. Instead, we want to do object. Uh, we we want to turn symmetry off and just scale up that edge loop a little bit. Boom. Then make sure you turn uh, symmetry back on. Um, so that's very cool. Uh, the spoon is looking nice. Uh, I want to talk about uh, our display modes now, right? Display modes, retaining edge loops, and bevel. So bevel's a new tool, um, and retaining edge loops are uh, a, a feature that is pretty prevalent in making these objects. Um, if you press three, it's going to go into a smooth preview, right? It's going to preview your ob like what your object looks like if it were super high poly, right? So if you went up to this button up here, and let me let me save just because like I, I don't know, I feel like um, I've been doing a lot of stuff in this file. I'm gonna say spoon demo. Boom, save as, and say I click this little smooth button. Smooth is just adds faces to the selected polygons. It basically subdivides the model. Boom, see that? So now it's a really smooth shape even smoother, even smoother. Ah, oh, it's so smooth. Um, fantastic, but like, please don't click that button a bunch. Um, in fact, it's very rare that you click that button, especially as a beginner, because it's our tendency to kind of go as detailed as we want at the very beginning. We want to, we want to avoid that, right? Like think if I hit this button and then I had to like try to fix some of this like edge loop stuff, like it would be, it'd be really hard because you have like even more polygons. You're like, oh man, now, now I'm not affecting as much of the shape with with like a, such a small click, right? So let's undo that. Um, but essentially, three. I press three, and I have an object select. It's going to show me what it looks like if it if we did press this button like twice, you know. Um, and then if you press one with it selected, it goes back to its normal state. Sorry, water break. <clears throat> and ideally, we want it to look pretty, it already looks pretty nice in this. But um, if you want it to look real nice, like like super nice, like this, is, this is fine for my purposes, you know. But if you want it to look really nice, you can add retaining edge loops. Like see how the, the dish of this kind of gets lost when we go into three mode. If you want to add some retaining edge loops to that surface, like if I just add two right here, and then I press three, see that see that edge? Now it gets like really defined in there. It gets real defined. So that's a, that's a cool tool um, to do that. I'm gonna undo all those those little edge loops right there. And instead, I'm going to use something they call bevel. So bevel is pretty amazing. If I just double click all these edges in here, and then I click bevel, uh, it gives me another one of those option boxes, right? So with fraction, I can control the fall off of it. And then segments, if I do two, it's going to kind of it's going to give me that that buffer. It's going to give me three edges on all those shapes. Boom! Then I can press three, and look at that. It's getting Super smooth, super smooth. Now there's some weirdness going on over here um, because we're getting one 
tr triangles in here, but then we're also getting um, five pointed faces. So essentially, if you're beveling, you want to make sure that like you're fixing these shapes up. Uh, the way that I would approach that is by sort of actually I would probably do it on that first bevel. Let's see right here. Let's go back. Um, so I'm just going to select all these edges in, throughout here. And let's hit bevel. Boom. And I'm going to do two segments. And then these are getting a, a little bit too crunched up, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's a smooth surface on the... Um, on the uh, the reference, so I basically need to spread these edges out and make sure they're not pinching each other, right? So I would just go in and just move that and make a make a nice make a nice round shape with those extra edges. But again, that's going a little bit beyond what I need in terms of detail from you guys. I'm more concerned with the step before it, you know, like trying to get that nice, trying to get that nice uh, dip in there, you know, uh, and then if you press three, boom, look at that, spoon. I present to you spoon. But yeah. And you got rid of those triangles by selecting the other, uh, like the handle, like those. Yeah. I, I, Exactly. I extended all of those down here. Now the problem is, uh oh, anyone see the problem here? Ooh, dangerous. Absolute danger. All those uh, edges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a way, a, a quick way we could fix that is by just cutting across. Boom. Multi-cut. Those are no longer. Those are what? One, two, three, four, five, six-sided faces. We don't want that. Let's push, push that little point out, right? Very nice. Now let's see what it looks like. Boom. Okay. So it's getting super stretched out down here. That's because, like, look at this solid shape right there. I need a retaining edge loop there as well. So I'm going to go into multi cut. I'm just going to make one cut right there. I might do two if I really want to buffer it down there. But again, that's just that's a little bit too detailed for what I, I need from you guys. I just need you guys to be able to construct that main shape of the spoon first, you know, before any of that beveling or, or anything. That's that's essentially a technique that uh, you use for like high poly modeling, which we're gonna talk about later, right? Because if you've seen if you've seen uh, any movie with VFX, any Marvel movie, you'll notice that those shapes are uh, their shapes are smooth and clean and very detailed, you know. So uh, they're using way higher poly counts than we are. We're at like, you know, 600 triangles, but, uh, but they, they, they push it, right? They push it, so. But yeah, so that's, that's a, a lot of tools for you right there. Um, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go over some, some more tools for for the time being um nothing too crazy it's just uh, i'm just going to talk about scene organization and uh spaces right so oh was it was there any questions about about bevel or or smooth preview or the spoon i'm still a little confused on like how symmetry works oh absolutely yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so let's let's help you out there let's make a cube then i'm going to multi-cut oh oh thank you for asking this question because uh there is one aspect of symmetry if you already have symmetry on and you're trying to cut a line of symmetry uh it doesn't always work see how it didn't cut through out of the way spoon no one wants you here yeah there we go. Um, see how my when I cut that line of symmetry, it like it just didn't even go across this face. 
So make sure when you're cutting, oh man, spoon. Damn you. There you go. Make sure when you're cutting a line of symmetry that you turn off symmetry first, right? Because Maya is basically like, oh, I'll make a cut right there. And then it tries to do that same thing on the other side, but that's it's the same side. So then the math gets all confused. So, um, so yeah. So here we go. Um, let's make just some, some cuts like this and let's activate symmetry, right? So let's do Z symmetry, right? So if you look down at the bottom, actually this would be better visualized with my move tool. Um, we have this blue axis, right? That's Z axis. So it's going across left and right there. It's actually, I, I kind of messed up on this model. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go backwards and fix it. There we go. Uh, we should always, or at least for the most part, we should be modeling with Z facing towards us, right? So if this were a character, they would be facing the screen with this blue, you know? We always wanna be modeling Z forward. Uh, and that's because specifically for this class, um, we're gonna be using an auto rig, something that's gonna create the skeleton of our character for us. Um, and it's like super cool and I love it, but uh, you need your character facing Z forward for that. And it's gonna make sure that it's, it's working that way. Um, so our line of symmetry should always be on that uh, zero value, you know, of that of that Z axis. See that? So it'll be a straight up, a straight cut right through there. Uh, and then the way that symmetry works is based around that sort of cut and like the space of these verts in the world. So if I move one of these verts a little bit to the side, and then I turn on symmetry object X. Boom. Now it's going to keep track of those verts because it's like, oh, you have one vert over from this middle span, right? And then boom, you got object X right there. Uh, but if you go to world X and then, oh, wait, they fixed it. Okay. So world X used to work with position, right? So if I went in and moved this way far away, uh, and then I would turn on. Okay, all right, so it was kind of just working ballpark then. All right, so I really broke the symmetry there. Now world X and I, I believe object X won't work with it either. Um, they are not symmetrical, right? So it can't, it can't move those points at the same time. But if I select these ones, since they, I didn't mess with those, I can move those around as well. So I can move, move those in and out and it's fine. Um, now uh, topology, Basically, you can select an edge and then it will detect where which which verts to mess around with, right? So if I then go into vert mode, notice how now it, it can sense the symmetry between those, right? So that's also important, you know, to, to kind of grasp if you, if you, if symmetry is falling off. Um I would say don't rely too much on symmetry though. Um no, that's not to say that you should model both sides of an object. Like for sure, don't do that. Like that's just uh, going to be much slower. Like if I was modeling a face, I'd only model half of it. They they call that modeling modeling on the half. Um, and essentially, what that can look like is if you just went in and deleted these faces, boom, you can go in and multi-cut this any which way you want, creating any sort of shape that you want. I'm creating some sort of cool rounded shape, you know. Scale that in, you know, very nice. Um, and then afterwards, what you can do is just go to mesh and mirror. And then if you, if you click that box, it's gonna give you a all these options right here. Um, so what you can do is change the axis to X and then direction negative, boom, there you go. And then it just mirrored it, got it perfectly symmetrical. And yeah, so, so if symmetry falls off for you, because it can, not all, it's not flawless, you know, 
uh, just realize that you, 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 you're not out of options, right? You're not like doomed. You can always mirror the object and do a bunch of different stuff with it. So, so yeah, lots of cool I have stuff. A question. Man. Yeah. What's up? When you mirror and mesh, does the inside have faces in it? It does not. Or do they it get did. rid of it? It, 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 it gets rid of it for you. Um, because if it didn't, then that would create a mesh error called now this is, a, this is another weird one this is another weird one we're gonna only have to worry about this later non-manifold geometry like if i had because remember we're describing the surface of it right we're describing only the surface so if, if you had geometry on the inside now you could have like a box on the inside like this you know as a separate like entity uh, yeah exactly and you could even mesh combine those and they wouldn't be they, they wouldn't be wrong but if you have if i go in and if i just extrude this face inward see how we oh sorry you your like um this would be easier if i go into formula see how we have this just hanging face in here wait there we go that's non-manifold geometry, right? Because this is no longer the surface, right? The surface is all this outside stuff, but then we accidentally have surface going on the inside. And then that surface, like, everything is one-sided, right? You know, because if you, if you delete a face, boom, you can see into the object, right? The black, that's like the backside, right? So everything is, is essentially one-sided. You want all this gray to be describing the, the object, right? So at this point where this gray meets that black, that's what creates that error, essentially. Non-manifold geometry. Um, but yeah, so that that's gonna be that, that's gonna come up later in the course. Um, but that's also why it doesn't create that, like by that's why the mirror tool is like smart enough to to deal with that because that can create problems for your mesh, both inside and outside of mine. Um, all right. I'm going to get a drink of water and I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so that was essentially a long winded explanation of don't worry about symmetry if it falls off. It's cool. It's, it's great to use. Like I love symmetry. Um, but yeah, um, what was I, what was I going on about? Oh, I was going to be talking about scene organization and then we got on to that symmetry topic. Is there any other stuff that you guys have questions about before, uh, before I move on? We don't have much time left before DINs, so. So you would suggest the half, the like working half? Yep, if it's a half. symmetrical model, right? Because like the face, it's not perfectly symmetrical as we all know, we've done self portraits, you know? Um, but like, for the most part, it's, you know, I have one eye here, one eye here, one eyebrow, like it, it's it's kind of symmetrical. So I, I, would, I would start modeling a face on the half. And then uh, if I wanted to get like really detailed, I'd break symmetry later. Um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so for, for anything that's like symmetrical, then you can definitely model it on the half, like, like this chair that I'm sitting in, it's symmetrical. Like, so why, why not, why not just model it on the half, you know, and then mirror it or uh, like my, my technique is best. Basically I use symmetry the whole time. And then if symmetry falls off for some reason, then I resort to mirroring it. Oh, whoops. Just pulled out my, my earbuds um but yeah so that that's kind of my approach to it do you do your sprints for to build back the sack the face sorry what was that do you use bridge to um like put back the face of it the that's an that's an excellent question i was going to actually show you a, guys a, a bonus tool that i like a lot so we could definitely bridge right uh, I, I'll actually, I'll show you guys three ways to fix this. So we could extrude, right? I'm, I'm just selecting one edge and then I'm just moving it 
and extruding it and then I'm target welding it, you know, boom. And so that, that's a little bit slow, you know, um, not too slow, not too slow. Uh, but there's also uh, bridging, right? And bridging essentially does that exact same process. It, it basically takes that edge, brings it out and then welds it to that other edge right there. That's, that's basically what bridge does. So that, that's completely valid. I like that solution for a lot of things. Um, and then there's also a cool one uh, called mesh fill hole right here. So this one's, this one's hidden under the menu. I believe it's our first tool that's like hidden under the menu besides that combine and separate that we, that we were talking about the other day and mirror. Um, actually, yeah, I just lied to you guys, sorry. Uh, but yeah, fill hole, boom. It just fills it up. Now, the problem with fill hole is that it's not foolproof, but it's, it's pretty cool nonetheless. So if I take a bunch of these faces, boom, like this, and I delete it, that's gonna be hard to bridge, you know? That's gonna be a hard one. Uh, instead, I like to just double click this and then, um, where is it? Uh, if you hold shift, right click, you can, quickly access all of these tools and then fill holes right there so rather than just going up here but if, if you're comfortable with the, the the menu buttons up here then that that's completely fine i'm sure one of these is also fill hole let's see do, 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 do. ah it doesn't look like it huh tragic well Huh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, the, it's it's the tool regardless. Mesh fill hole, and then you can just multi cut across boom, to restore that geo, right? Got to got to restore that that topology. Got to fix all of those edge loops. There you go. Oh, missed one. Nice. There we go. So so that's the that's another method that I would use, right? The problem with that, that, that hole that we fixed though, is that it's now like super hard, right? You have like super hard edges over it. If you ever see these hard edges, just go to mesh display with your object selected and do soften edge. And that'll do its best. Ooh, ooh, what are we getting down here? Something might be going wrong. I might've, ah, look at that. So another reason why uh, mesh display soften edge is nice is because it, it, it showed me a problem with my mesh that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. See how I have an extra uh, vert right there? Boom. So I'm going to click my object and I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm just going to select that area and do edit mesh merge. I showed that one last did class it, because that one happens a lot. Oh, what's up? Did that happen because of the, um, you bridged it? I think it happened when I showed that example of the extrude. Like remember when mm -hmm. I had this and I was like, oh, oh okay. you can just extrude. And I, I must have just not undone it completely, you know? So I think that's what, what created the problem. Um, okay. Because, yeah, remember, be very careful with uh, extrude. You got to either move it or undo it. Or you need to scale it or, like, do that little, like, offset stuff. So that there's a lot of options, but, like, you got to move it immediately once you make it. Um, but, yeah. So the bridging, that one won't create that kind of problem, right? Where you have extra edges because since you're bridging across, it should be fine. Exactly, exactly, okay. yeah. It'll, it'll be fine, like, look at that, boom. And then if I, it does make it like the hard surface. So if I go to mesh display and then soften edge, boom. Looking good, looking good. It's not like an amazing because it's, it's like pretty low poly still, you know, but like it's looking good, it's looking fine. But yeah, oh, any questions about um, geometry stuff? Any of the tools that we went over right there? Um, I'm gonna save, I think the scene organization stuff for when we get back, it'll be uh, pretty cool. I had a quick question that has to do with something from yeah. last time. Uh, could you show us how to look at n-gons again? Like how yeah. to see like things we messed up because I tried doing it and I did it, and it like made my squares with a, a lot of like different. It just made up a whole bunch of edges and vertexes and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Confused. Perfect. Okay. That that's a good question. So in here in mesh, and then clean up. 
hit that options. And uh, what I'm guessing happened was that you, uh, you left it on cleanup matching polygons because it comes in with the tool defaulting to clean up matching polygons. And then if you do, um, oh, look, there's one for non-manifold geometry, the thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, very useful, very useful. Uh, but we're, what we're concerned with is faces with more than four sides. So make sure that that's checked. Nothing else needs to be checked. And I have one right here. And if I click apply, boom, look at that. So it fixed it because we had clean up matching polygons selected, but then it made it triangles. And you're like, bro, I don't, I don't need that. So you can just delete them. Or what I like to do is uh, do, there we go. I like to do select matching polygons sometimes and be like, oh, there it is. And then if you can't see it still, like if you're on this side, I like to press four and then it, it'll automatically select whatever end gone you have. Because when you're working on like a whole character, it could be like a part like under like the ankle or something like that's like causing the problem. So it's, it's nice to, it's nice to use this select thing the select matching polygons and then pressing F to focus on whatever you have. Um, again, these can be super tiny faces. So sometimes you might have to move them and just undo to see like what part of the mesh is getting pulled out weird. Uh, but yeah, just as long as you know where it's going, just click apply and then you can, you can fix the geo by just deleting those edges, you know. Um, Got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, any other questions before we head off to DIMS? All right. All right. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, let's be back at um, 7, 7 p.m. And we're going to go into more scene organization. And I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to walk you guys through the homework. And uh, because it's a doozy, it's a doozy. Is it going to be model of face? No, no. Um, <laughs> okay. But you're not far off. You're not oh, far damn. off. <laughs> it's going to be modeling a hand. hand. Yeah. I knew it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what, dude? It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. All right. Everyone be back at seven. slowly taking over my life a little bit more. Um, okay. Let's see my recording again. Yeah, recording is underway. Very nice. Um, okay, so we learned a lot of uh, modeling tools. There's a few more to go over, um, but honestly, a lot of it's just gonna be trial and error, you know, to, to just get better at it. Um, and yeah, I, I can't preach that enough because honestly, that, that's like how I got uh, to be, that, that's just how you get better as an artist is to just try and try again, you know, um, regardless of the discipline, like whatever you're doing. Um, so let's talk about scene organization and setting up our project, right? Setting up the project for the, uh, for the class, really. Um, because Maya is formatted in a way where, uh, let me share my screen. Maya is formatted in a way that's going to kind of come with this default set of folders. And we need to make our own one because later in the semester, you guys are gonna be working on campus and off campus. So I want you guys to be able to easily bring your work to and from school um or if you're gonna send it over to the uh the lab to to get rendered out then they'll need to they'll need your project folder you can't just send them one dot mb and call it a day you know like you're eventually gonna have image files of like the color of all your character the uh the, the shininess of that character the roughness all that and then it's gonna need to spit out the files somewhere too to send it back to you so this is um, this is like a project folder workflow, and this is kind of this kind of happens at studios as well. They don't use Maya's default one, uh, at least the ones, the, the ones that I've worked at, but they do uh, do something very similar, you know. Um, so let me close this.
And let's go ahead. And I'd like everyone to do this with me. I'd like everyone to do this with me. What you're gonna do is go to file and then open up this project window. See, see this down here on the list? It's kind of lower to the bottom. It's called project window. So click that. And this is how we can create a new project. So for mine, it's showing my current project as this one, you know, fall 2021, that is last semester. It's because have, we haven't yet created the uh, fall 2022. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click this new button. You guys might say something like default or something, but go ahead and click this new button. Anyone having a problem so far? Let me know, because this is very important that we do this uh, right now to get it out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click new, boom. And it's gonna be new project. And I'm gonna change, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it Mike Henriette, just call it whatever you, your name is. Mike Henriette, uh, art 426, spring, 2022. So this is like your, this is going to be the project folder. And essentially when we, when we do accept down here and when we change the uh, file path, actually let's do that right now. So you want to make sure this is at an easily remembered location on your computer. Don't hide this a bunch. Mine is just under desktop. And then in my big uh, college course materials folder. So I'm going to click this, I'm going to click this little folder icon right here and give it a new folder. Boom. Um, and then I'm going to navigate out here, course materials. I'm going to do a, uh, new folder. I'm going to do art four, two, six spring 2020, 2022. There we go. So, and then I'm going to double click in there and it's, it'll be an empty folder. And then you'll just select that. So we, we created a new folder for, for it to put all these all this project hierarchy stuff in. And so I'm just going to click select there. So now it should be like a current project, location. Um, and then what's going to happen is that it's going to create all of these project folders. These are all the ones that we need now. It has some extra stuff that you can, you can include if you're getting real, real wild with it. Um, but these are the main ones that we need to worry about scenes, assets, images, source images. And as we go along, you'll find that, uh, you're going to be putting stuff into different spots. For instance, if you use any images, like any textures, they're going to end up in source images, any reference as well. Like if you're, if you have like reference of a character that you want to make, then I would, I would suggest putting it in source images. Um, when you render out. And that's basically telling the computer to take a little little photograph of your scene. Uh, those images will, by, uh, by default, end up in this images folder. Um, but for now, anything that we make, we're going to put into the scenes folder right here. You know, it's all going to end up in that scenes folder. Um, like your .mbs, any .objs that you make, any .mas, any .fbx, those are all going to be in there. All right. Um, but for now, all we need to do, once we have these two things filled out, we just need to press accept. So there we go. So it might not seem like much has changed, but now if I save scene as, boom, see that? It automatically takes me to the scenes folder that we just made. So see like how it says scenes, like Henriette, art 426, spring, boom, bang. So. Uh, it, it's an amazing way to work. And then I can just save Spoon Demo. Boom, there we go. And so that's all we needed to do. Just set up the project like that. And uh, you'll be set. Because once you once we start coming to campus and stuff, um, let's see, we're in mission two. Now we're looking for, no, oh, where are you? Course materials, 426 spring. Well, once you're coming back and forth from class, you'll just take 
the folder above all of these, like, so, so you see how it has all this, this huge hierarchy in here. Um, just grab this folder, put it onto like a flash drive, put it onto a, a little external hard drive, something that you can hook up to the school computers and then you'll just slide those in, you know? So that'll be great. That'll be great. And we're all set up there. Um, but yeah, so now I just want to start tackling the homework with you guys. Because there's a few tools in there that are new. Um, and they'll be, uh, I'll just go over those as we're looking at them. All right. So let's look at course content. You've been away. No. Freaking beach board content. Please. Wait a minute. <laughs> you think I'm going to give away my info? No, sorry. See if I can even remember my login and info. It's been a while. It's been a while. Oh wow, I just can't do it. One second. Let me log in again. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Okay, let me share my screen again. Boom. Perfect. All right. So what you're looking for is we're, we're healthily into the modeling section now, guys. So uh, expand this bad boy. You're going to see a bunch of, you're going to see a lot less stuff than I have because I've hidden a lot of like my older stuff, my outdated stuff. Um, and what you're looking for is Mike's modeling obstacle course topology. So hopefully this works. It was created on an older version of Maya. So there might be some compatibility issues. But uh, let's just download it and give it a go. So I'm going to take Mike's modeling obstacle course. I'm going to hit download. And I like to just right click show in folder. Boom, perfect. Now I also, I want to put that in that, uh, that new folder that we made. It's because we, it's, it's good to work with this um, project folder in mind, right? So I'm going to open up that project folder that I created, this one right here has all these folders in there and we're looking for scenes. So I'm gonna put this in scenes, I'm gonna drag it in, boom, there we go. So now, since we set up that file, since we set up that file, I don't need Spoon anymore, Let's see you later. It was, sorry, it was Mike's modeling obstacle? Uh, obstacle like course that? topology, yeah, this one. Okay. Right here. Sorry, yeah, I know the name's kind of like <laughs> a run on sentence there, but yeah, so give that a download. I suppose I could also copy it to uh, Discord as well. I'll put it in the resources folder. Actually, I'll put it. I'll put it in general because I, I save resources more for like learning stuff. Though I guess this does qualify as a resource. Boom. So if you if you want it through Discord, you can grab it there as well. Um, See, so yeah, I give that a download um, and. Since we since I moved it into that project folder, into that scenes folder right there after I downloaded it, I can it's really nice because if I go to file open scene, it just takes me straight to that folder, you know. So it, it's nice to work with that uh, with that sort of project hierarchy in mind because it just it's all your stuff right there. So I'm gonna give it an open. Let's hope that uh, things, yeah, sure, I'll save my spoon demo. Let's hope that things are fine. Okay, here we go. Here we go, my friends. I apologize ahead of time because this, like I said, this class, this um, this lecture is a, a doozy. Um, fortunately, we've already gone over most of the tools that you need for this. There's only a few that we haven't discussed, and it's mostly in these first two, to be honest, right? So 
in this in this file, uh, if you look at your timeline down here, you can see that as I left click on the timeline and scrub, which is something we're going to be doing when we get to the animation stage of things, if you scrub, you got this little crane with a hook on it, and it's just spinning, right? So essentially, what I want to happen is boom. is for the ornament to be spinning with it. And I did that with just a few button presses, but I wanna explain conceptually what's going on there. Essentially, uh, if you, uh, th this kind of requires you to have your uh, outliner open. Remember, this is your outliner. In order to fully understand it, we need the outliner. So if I go to Windows and outliner, I'll, I'll get my very own outliner in the scene. And if I click on this ornament, you'll see that it's ornament. Okay, apparently I couldn't type when I made this assignment, but that's fine. Um, here's our little ornament right there. And then here is our crane. So we have, if you, if you select on these, you can expand the hierarchy and you can see that, oh, this crane is actually composed of three different meshes. You know, you got this, this base mesh, this mesh, and right here, the, very, the, the tip of the hook, right? So our goal is to get this ornament to spin with that crane. Now this crane is animated, or this base crane is, like this, this, this one right here. So that's animated and it's moving around. And so we just need this ornament to be a child object, right? See how this crane object, like this very, the very tip is in this hierarchy right here. We need that ornament to be in there as well. Now what this is called, uh, this is called parenting when you have a hierarchy like this. So crane three, this one right here, is considered the child, quote unquote, of crane two right here, right? And then crane two is the child of crane one. And then crane one is just a child of the entire scene. So it doesn't have like a parent node above it. Um, and you'll see that if, if you have this hierarchy set up and then you uh, go to like crane two or something, as I move crane two, crane three is following it, right? And it gets, it's getting a little bit whacked out there because of some, uh, some values that I forgot to freeze, but that's fine. So let's undo this and get it back into that position. Let's see. Been doing a lot of selecting in here. There we go. Uh, so if, if you move this, you'll see that as it animates, now it's animating with that offset as well, right? Uh, so that's just parenting for you. Uh, now, in order to get this ornament into that hierarchy, what we do, it, there, there's a few ways. You can, if you, if you have like a big enough outliner here, you can middle click drag that ornament onto Crane 3 and see how now I can, I can expand this view right here. And you'll see that ornament is now a child of that. So if, if this starts animating, boom, look at that. Ornament is spinning with it, right? Ornament is spinning with it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now we just need to get it aligned. And we can align it with just some, some basic moving tools, you know? Like I can visually go in and be like, okay, I'm going to move it here. I'm going to move it here. And I'm going to move it here, right? But I want to show you guys a little bit about pivot points and snapping, right? So if I, am I in default hotkeys? I don't think I am. No, I'm not. Uh, but it with default hotkeys, see how um, when I rotate this object, oh, let's get this. Uh, there we go. Let's get it out of that hierarchy. Um, with default, uh, pivot uh, with this default pivot point that I set it's kind of garbage because if I rotate it look at the the, the object is like so off center there, right it's like completely like I'm not rotating it around the center of that object at all um if I want to return that pivot point to the center of an object go to modify center pivot boom see that now it, it just found the center of that object and it just snapped it right there 
Now to manually override that pivot point, you can press D and then your manipulator will change like this, right? So now you're gonna, you're gonna want to set it to a certain point on the surface, right? And I kind of want to set it to this point right here, like the underside of that hook, because then I want to snap that hook to the, uh, to the tip of that crane, right? So the way that we can do that is by holding V. Notice that when I hold V, snap to verts becomes highlighted up here, snap to points. So if I hold V and then drag the middle of this, look at that. So it's snapping all over to every vert on that surface. It's also snapping through to verts behind the surface as well. But look at that. So it's snapping. It, it'll only go to verts on that object. It'll go, go to verts in the scene as well. So that's snapping. Snapping is very useful because you can snap to verts. You can also snap to grid with X. Uh, and I don't have the grid visible, but if I do, if I, if I snap to grid, boom, see how it's just going to those grid points. So that's really useful for, for trying to get something to be on like the center axis of something like for trying to bring this ornament over to world zero right here, we could just snap it right there with our snap tools. So that's just snapping. And then since we pressed D or insert, inserts another key that works for this, um, you'll notice that I can't move the object anymore. So I'm just gonna snap it to exactly where I want that pivot point, boom, by holding V and just dragging on the middle of that. And then I'm gonna press D again, and it's gonna bring me back into my regular tools, right? And I just pressed five to bring it back to that shaded view rather than four with the, the uh, wireframe. Um, so now I have that pivot point snapped there. And what I can do now, is look, I can move the object from that pivot point. If I rotate it, it's gonna rotate from that pivot point. So that's pretty powerful, especially when we're modeling and we need like a specific orientation of something. Uh, and then if I hold V, if I go, if I press W to go in my move tool and then hold V, now I'm snapping on verts in the scene and I can snap it straight to that little hitch right there. Boom, perfect. And then I can, I can be more precise and do it like that. Um, right on that hook. And then next step is parent it. So remember you can middle click drag and then it'll be on crane three and then you're set. This part of the homework is done. Alternatively, you can select the child object, the one that you want to be the child and then shift select the parent and then press P. Boom, and then see how it appears in there. And then to get it out of that hierarchy, if you need to, you can just press Shift P, boom. So P and Shift P, those are the keys for that. And remember- Sorry, what was that? I was trying to put on uh, the ornament. What was oh, the P for and- sure. For sure, yeah, so that's, that's for parenting. So if once you get it into the correct spot and you wanna have it in this hierarchy with the crane, you can select the child object, this one, and then select the parent object. So I'm gonna select the crane, number three, and then I'm gonna press P, boom. And then it'll just, it'll snap it into that hierarchy. And then to get it out of that hierarchy, you just select the, the one you wanna remove from that hierarchy and press shift P, boom, there you go. So you select the child first and then the parent. Mm -hmm. okay. Child and then parent. Now to select multiple objects in the outliner, you hold control. That's how you select multiple ones. But in viewport, you hold uh, control and shift or just shift. Shift is a little, like slightly different. There's like some nuance there, but for the most part, that's true. Can we see how you did the pivot one more time? Absolutely. I, I was too busy looking for the center pivot that I missed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Oh yeah, center pivot, by the way, is under modify again. So if I, if I have like a really wacky pivot point, like out here, boom, uh, modify center pivot will bring that right back to the object. So it's super cool. Uh, and then to modify the pivot and make our own, uh, you can press D 
if you're if you're using default key, key bindings or insert either one, and you'll get this UI. Boom, and so so you can snap you can get your you, you can get your uh, pivot point to be anywhere you want in the world, um, but I want to snap my pivot point to this vert to this vertex right there. So if I hold V, boom, you'll see that this highlights a different uh, color. And then this becomes uh, a different little, it, it like looks a little bit different. See what I'm holding that. So that's how you know you're snapping. And then this will snap to any vert in the scene. I'm just going to snap that to the bottom of that ornament right there. Nice. There's also, um, you can also snap on each axis too. So if I wanted my pivot point to be as far over as this right hand side of the ornament over here, but at that same level, I could snap only on X. You know, I could only I could snap with only this red axis. You see that? And I could just drag over to that to that rightmost point. Boom. So that's gonna help with precision. You know, you can you can really get precise that way. Um, I want to show you before I forget. So that's how you modify the pivot, right? And then remember to get out of that, you press insert or D, either one. Um, you can also snap with like your other uh, vertex tools, you know. So if I want to, if I want it to be out as far as this one, I can go into this view and then hold X and then snap with V. See that? Boom. So they're all getting to that that sort of that level. And so yeah, this will this will definitely help with precision and getting that to look nice, you know. If you wanted a flat surface on this sphere for some reason, you know. There you go. But yeah, so snapping, very important concept to understand. And then again, just to show it. Um, with my W tool and my pivot point set up, I can just hold the V and then snap it to that crane because I have a, uh, some verts right there. I might need to center it depending on which vert it snapped to, you know. Uh, and then after that, select the child and then the parent and then press P. Boom. So now when you scrub the timeline, look at that baby. Look at that. We got a little, got a little wrecking ball. We got like a little, little wrecking ball right there. Very cool. All right, so that's one down, one down out of the uh, as a homework. Oh, also on YouTube, I have a walkthrough of just the homework. You know that you can follow. All right. So next up, we have a few. Uh, we have a few different little trials in here, right? So we have first the object that you're going to be working with and then the object that it's associated with right here. See that? So we're just going to kind of go down to each one. I should have like numbered this or something to make it a little bit more clear. Um, but this is what we're going for, this little shape right here. And this is what we're starting with, right? So there's a few things involved in here you're noticing immediately that it's a very smooth surface. And I bet you're wondering, you're like, how, how do I get this smooth surface when I'm, when I only know how to mess around with like points, like who do you think I am, Mike? I'm, I'm, I'm one person, I'm one human, I can't do this. But you definitely can. So if we, uh, I, I always like to recommend that students duplicate what they're working on. That way, like if you really, really mess up, you have like the source one right here, you know, that, that you can always go back to. So I, I just duplicate it and then move it to the other side of this thing. And I'm gonna scale it up to match like the size of that thing. And then I'm also, since since there's a little, it's a little bit higher res than what I'm working with, I'm gonna hit that smooth button that I was telling you guys about earlier, right? So I'm gonna click smooth, very nice. Ooh, looks like I can click smooth again. There we go. Now we're talking. Very cool. And now I have way too many verts, right? And you're probably like, Mike, you told me not to work with this high poly stuff like this early on. And that's 100% true. Don't do this normally. Like if you're trying to make like a, a shape, don't, don't start this high res, you know? So instead, 
Well, and so so we're 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 not going to worry about that for this one. But in order to get around this and make these smooth shapes, I'm going to show you something called soft select. So if you have if you click one vert on this surface and then press B, you'll see that mine's kind of glowing. And what's the, what's happening here is that I have a soft selection. You can see that's a slight gradient, but if you hold B and middle click drag left and right you can see a fall off start to happen see this you can see i have yellow and it go, fades back into like some dark red i think sorry i'm very colorblind so i probably got that wrong but um there's a dark red right there and see this it's kind of it's bending that surface in a in a more organic way now I have some, I have some tool. I'm going to go to my tool settings because I have a different default setting than you guys. So I'm going to, in order to access any tools settings, you can always find it up here with it, with this little hammer icon. You can also double click the tool and it will bring you to those settings. Um, but I'm looking for soft selection in here. And I'm looking for, I believe this is the default curve. There we go. Cool. So now we're working at the same one, but yeah, look at how, look at how more, like smooth that surface is, how much more organic it is. So just divide up the surface and then just push some points around with with smooth, with smooth uh, or with soft select. My bad, misspoke there. And you can again hold B and middle click, drag left and right to to change the fall off. And you can get some really interesting shapes. Like you can start yeah, rotating. Yeah. How, how did you get the soft select the tool? Uh, B. So if you if you press B, B, yep. If you it, it, select a vert a no, vertex exactly on the right. surface and then press B and it should toggle that on as you press B. Uh, is that oh, working okay. Mine, mine was really mine was tiny. I oh, had it like it had like <laughs> a, was it was like this. It was just like super yeah. small. Yeah. Super so, small. Like I didn't see any changes. Any, and I think I was also far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So B oh. and middle click drag will change that fall off. And you can get some cool effects in there. So do whatever you want with this. I'm down for you to, to explore soft select a little bit and see what see what's got in store for you. But save your energy because the guitar and the hand are very difficult. So so just be aware of that. Okay, this next one is uh, basically rerouting geometry, right? It's essentially rerouting. And you can see, you can see that little reroute that I was doing earlier right there, right? It's that same, it's that same pattern. And I just want to show you guys when you encounter this problem. So um, ima basically imagine this top one, like th this is a scenario that happens all the time. Like you'll be modeling your head up here and then you'll get down to the body and the body's not as complex. It's still a complex shape, don't get me wrong, but um, you're going to have like less polys there, right? So you'll have to like kind of hook up a neck or, or like a head to a, a lower poly neck. And so I need to show you guys how you can figure that out. Um, essentially what you do is uh, you're, you, it's a nice way to just be able to reduce it by one, or uh, sorry, by, by, by two spans. And what I'm talking about is like, you have one span right here. That's one span and you have two spans right there. So there's two spans on this side connecting into four. See that? So there's four spans going into two. So the way you do that, and it's a little bit backwards, it's a little bit strange. You're gonna take these, you're gonna take this four side and you're gonna push it in. Then you, I'm just going into the verts as well, pushing those even further. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to go to the modeling toolkit and we're going to take these two right here and I'm gonna extrude those outward right there. See that? So now I extruded those out and then let's target weld. Actually, I'll, I'll hold and wait for everyone to, to get to that point. So move those, move those middle two spans back and then extrude them out. Can you do that again? Oh yeah, absolutely. Fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
guys, I'm, I'm always down to, to go over something again, you know? So take these two edges right here, make sure you're in edge mode, hold right click to go into edge mode. And then I'm just selecting one and I'm shift selecting the other. And I'm gonna press W to get into my move tool. I'm just gonna move that back along the Z axis right here, this one right here. So now it's getting closer to that other span. And then next I'm going to press control E to extrude that out. See that? So now that's kind of where I left off. So do, so do that on the other side. Next up, we're gonna be going to target weld. So I'm gonna target weld and I'm just gonna go into vertex mode. And I'm gonna target weld this vert to that vert right there, right? Just gonna, I'm just gonna spread those out essentially. See that? And now, presto changeo, we have the same amount of spans on this side as we have on this side, see that? And then we can simply bridge across, boom, look at that. Look at that. And remember to bridge, you have to select the same amount of edges on both sides. So just get all those selected and then do bridge, boom. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, the same here. I'm just gonna bridge across that. And it's basically the same solution that we do over here to fix this span as well. Same exact thing that we did over here. It's just a slightly different number. So we're going, instead of from four to two, we're going from three spans to one right here. See that? So we got three on this side, one on this side. So can anyone tell me how we're going to fix this up? Did you delete the two edges right there? Uh, which ones? Those two, the ones you just pressed, that one and that one. This one? No, Boom. just those two. Yeah. Wait, so delete these, you're saying? Yeah, the one, yeah. There we go. So now um, we have to also make sure we have the verts deleted. Boom. So this technically is working. This technically is working, um, but it is kind of, it, we have a, a complex, uh, we have an end gone here now. See that? So we need a method that's gonna not give us that end gone because I could bridge across now, right? You are correct, boom. But we got, we got this, this pesky little end gone here, you know? So uh, any ideas on how we could, we could get it, uh, get that fixed up? Since there's just one long one, just uh, push back one of the squares or the middle square and then extrude it after you connect the vertices. I mean, just kidding. You extrude it, then you connect the vertices to each other on both ends. And there you go. And Jesse has got it. Yeah, Jesse got it right. So now you bridge across as well. Um, but yeah. That's exactly right. It's the same solution. You just push that middle one in and then you just go uh, connect that geometry. Basically, it's just showing you, it's just reiterating that you can reroute that geometry and then that will conserve edge loops as well on the, on the other side. So you'll commonly see this sort of shape pop up in, in, your, in people's objects that they model. Uh, to save on, you know, density of the mesh, right? You don't want to get too dense in certain places. But yeah, good stuff, y'all. Good stuff. Very good stuff indeed. Okay. <laughs> Can you do that again? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I'll do, I'll do both sides fast as well, just so, so you, because I, I, sometimes I find like it's not breaking it up into the, into the hole if I go like that slow as well. So. I'll do it fast and I can do it slowly. So, boom. So the method for 
reducing and redirecting that geometry. Select the middle edges, move them back, extrude. There we go. Then target weld those to the sides. Boom. Then that's going to give you uh, that geometry shape. See this diagonal in there? That'll that'll let you uh, reduce that poly count a little bit, right? Because we could have we could have done this, you know, by just target welding to the sides here, and then going into edge mode, and then bridging, you know. But then you have that triangle there. I want to show you guys that you can you can get around the triangle and use quads instead. Right, because we have that that this pesky little triangle. I want to show you guys that you can use quads, right, for this sort of shape. Um, all right, and then here there's just a one to one right there bridge, and it's the same solution over here. You know, so move that back, and then extrude it out, and then target weld. Oops, got the wrong one there, and then bridge. No. Okay, because I didn't move it back. I didn't just like yeah. left it there. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it it's it really helps visually moving it back. Cause like as soon as you move it back, you're like, oh, okay. That's the that's the hole where like the little the new the new faces go into. Yeah, I just saw like maybe it got the line got thicker. So I was like, wait, I don't know if I did this right. Right. All right. Awesome stuff, y'all. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through this. Oh, uh, any questions about any of these previous ones before I move on? I want to make sure everyone's. Um, again, what was the, the key to attach the ornament to the crane? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, it is, boom. What you do is select the ornament, shift select the crane, and press P. Boom. There we go. When Make I sure did that, it didn't, um, it added the crane to the ornament and not the ornament to the crane. Oh, you might be, you, you might have selected it in the opposite direction, uh, in the opposite way. Remember, it always has to be child and then the parent. Okay, let me try again. So make sure you do ornament first. And make sure you undid the previous parenting as well, in case you like scramble them up a little bit. I tried doing it and it said not enough objects. Um, make sure you're, yeah, uh, hold right click, make sure you're in object mode. Okay, let me, let me try it again. No, that's all good. Yeah. This is what we're here for, y'all. To go through the trials and tribulations in 3D together. And when I press shift and mm -hmm. I select that little hook of the crane, mm -hmm. it in my outliner, it highlights the whole crane parenting thing. Is that what it's oh, supposed to be? You, you might have parented them strangely. Wait, are you selecting the, the, you're selecting the tip and it's highlighting everything? E yes. Because it, see, if I select this right here, it highlights everything because it's the parent object, you know? Right. Could you go into your outliner and could you see if crane one, two, and then three are in like this organization pattern right here? Um, they look like it to me. Um, That's weird. Uh, wait, do, me, wait, yeah, I don't know. Would you mind sharing your screen? Uh, sure. Let me enable screen sharing. Yeah, Watch go. it work when I share my screen. I'm gonna be so oh, dude, no, it, that's <laughs> that happens a freakish amount of times. Like, you don't know how many times I've called my boss over and been like, "What's going on?" And then she's just like, "Every everything's working, Mike. Like, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> like, it happens yeah. so. Well. Okay. Uh, did you enable it already? Yeah, it should be ready for you. Okay. Let me just make it bigger. It's kind of like I it's kind of hard when um I'm like watching you and I'm um, doing it at the same oh, time. Oh dude, yeah. I completely understand. Like my window it would... is like this big. So mm -hmm. I have to like let me see. 
Okay. Yeah, it looks like you select them correctly. Okay, here, let me try again. Let me and then just press, start. press, you should be able to press P right now. And oh, okay, so yeah. here's the ornament, right? And yeah. then, okay, let me just go up there. And then shift, and then click the little thing. Yeah, and, and then, then press P. Is it? And then, oh. yeah. So now it, you see that little plus sign next to crane three. Oh, you can okay, click but that. I wasn't doing that before. Yeah, it, uh, it, it dude, it's something about like I don't know. It's like Schrodinger's uh, Maya problem. Like it'll it'll work as soon as we get more observers on it. But when I was but, doing yeah. it before, this was still down there, and then the actually the crane three was attached to the ornament, and like I was selecting it. The, I did the exact same way. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, okay, that was that was it. And then for the one that you just demoed, you were demoing on um this one mm -hmm. okay all right i'm just making sure right. yeah I, I would always recommend duplicating it though in case like you mess up you know so so and remember guys the hotkey for duplicating is control d with the object selected okay and this is all that you're doing right like you were just um, yeah yeah you're like you're pretty much almost there um you, you did it on the wrong side though see how that's gonna that's gonna hook up and it's gonna be a it's gonna be two on that side and oh, you're, hey. okay. so it's it's a little bit wrong but it's it's not nothing nothing too crazy oh okay well i'll figure it out yeah yeah i was gonna ask also like i know that um so i was looking right now after and i have those hard edges is it because I, the way i was moving the edge the edges and vertices when i was no. doing the last no that's completely i i have i have hard edges as well see that Oh wait, you don't okay. because I'm not screen sharing. <laughs> One second. Um, here we go, screen share. Boom, there we go. So I, I still have hard edges too on this. Uh, oh, okay. To fix those, you can just click that mesh surface and then go to mesh display, soften edge. So, oh. There you go. And it has some like ripplyness, you know. So this is a, this is another reason why we want to avoid triangles as well because like these are more commonly created when triangles are being used, but not all the time, you know. So uh, that that'll just come with experience. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that just yet, you know. So so yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions before we move on to the uh, the guitar? What were we supposed to do with the big cloth? Here? Oh, for the for the cloth. Yeah. Um, just use soft select. So I'm gonna scale this up. Uh, make sure you duplicate this in case you really mess up, um, and just you know move that over there. Remember, it's Control D to duplicate. Um, and then I like to press this smooth button. Boom, bang, right there, and then. I press B, I, I go into vertex mode by holding right click, and then I press B, and then I have this soft select little fall off, and then just, just alter the, the cloth in any way that you want. I just want to make sure that you know about the tool soft select, you know, because it's a cool one. It's a fun one, you know. And in what circumstances do you usually use um, soft select? Is it uh, clothing? If I'm... Uh, not so much clothing, but it, it, like if I'm like think of, think about it, it's like I'm I'm working on like the profile. Oh wait, sorry, yeah, I'm like working on the profile of like a face or something, and I want to pull out just a a clump of verts in there. You know, that's when I'll commonly use it. Is if I I'm see. if I'm like modifying a bunch at one time, because if I don't use soft select and I start trying to pull on this, and I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's move this over. See how like jagged and stuff it becomes at the edge uh... of this. Yeah. So if I press B and then just give myself a little bit of a fall off, it becomes much more gradual and much more uh, easy to work with that way. Gotcha. Okay, sweet. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we hit the guitar? How did you get all those, uh, those verts in the cloth one? Because I saw it was just a little bit of squares. Oh, so yeah. It looked like a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One second. Let me control Z. 
Do, 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 do. And there we go. So this is what you start with. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, there's this smooth button right here. And I believe it's under mesh as well, mesh smooth. If you click uh, that, it just gives you it. a more dense mesh. Now, I, I want you guys to know about that button, but be scared of it, right? Because like, I don't want you guys to go super high def when you're, when you're just starting out modeling, you know? Like if you look at the, the guitar, it's pretty low poly. Like you, you, can, you can just see the faces on it and you can count them. Same with the hand. It's not super dense. It's more dense to, than the guitar for sure, but you know, it's still not too bad. All righty. Any other questions? Any other questions, my friends? All righty. Very cool. So hopping into the guitar hopping into the guitar. Um, is there any feature of this that you, that's like kind of throwing off some like little modeling clues into how I made it? Any feature of this wireframe? And I, feel free to just speak out. For me, it's the devil. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're right. There is a bevel in there. Definitely a bevel that I did at the end. You always save bevels for the end, you know. Um, what were you going to say, Jesse? The... Oh, go for it. I was going to say the tuners because <laughs> they're just... Are they part of the mesh or did you make it and then just kind of like plop it on top? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I like that one because that's kind of the purpose of this is that not all of these are connected, right? Like oh. if I go in, if I hold, if I, if I go into face mode and I start double clicking, look at that. You can see that the body is just a separate piece. You know, the, this little insertion point right here, boom, separate piece, each string, separate piece, separate piece. You know, so I want to make sure you guys know that you can craft things out of separate pieces of geometry. Um, if it makes sense, you know, like if you were doing like, um, like a, like a person, like just like their body, like that would be one continuous mesh, right? Because like we have skin that connects every single point. The eyeball, however, it's not going to be, it's not going to share any of the points of the skin, you know, because that thing has to rotate around in the eye socket. So that's going to be like an, an object like this, you know, it's just going to be like a free floating little, little thing in there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the purpose of this. Any other features that you guys see? So, someone was going to call something out about, about, the, uh, about the guitar. I want, I want to make sure. Was it the extrude and offset? Um oh look at you guys yep yep exactly exactly there's also a bonus cool feature that i use in there um that'll show you guys uh but yeah exactly look at this we, uh ivy is talking about this right here remember how if you see this shape of like a of an edge loop defining like a feature then that's it's a good there's a good chance that it could have been made from an extrusion that you either scale down or offset inward. So, um, so yeah, awesome stuff. I love your guys' observation. I, I always, it's always great hearing you guys talk about stuff like that because, um, yeah, it just, it, it, it warms my heart when you guys are learning. Dude. So you'll also notice that I gave you only a cube to start with. And you're like, Mike, what kind of, what's wrong with you? How can you do this? So this is purposeful. This is purposeful, you know, like, as I said, you can make any object from a cube, right? Any object. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You know? um, so first things first, let's get a line of symmetry going. Boom. So our good friend multi-cut and then control middle click right there. It's going to give us that line of symmetry. And then I'm going to make the body of the guitar first. I'm going to make the body. Um, I also recommend 
duplicating, but you at this point you guys don't even need the duplicate. You can just bring in your own cube. You guys are you guys are uh, good enough for that, you know. Uh, and then I'm gonna cut this across. So I got I like I said we're going for big shapes, right? I'm just kind of moving this to be the scale of that guitar, starting with uh, starting there. And I'm just gonna get a, a division in the middle, right? And this is going to be like where we kind of squeeze that together. At this point, however, I'm going to turn on symmetry, object X. And you can find symmetry under your modeling toolkit or up here. Both are both of the same, uh, the same tool up in this little spot right here. Both of, the, both of those are the same. So now what we're going to do is pinch these inward. And I need, I need some roundness here, right? So Let's go through and I'm just going to cut. So I'm just going to do a multi cut, right? Because if I do a multi cut, that's going to give me another vertex to work with for this, for this sort of bowed out shape of the body down there. Then I need to round out these corners, right? This is far too, far too uh, pointy. Also, note that I'm selecting through the mesh a lot just because I know where those points are under the surface, you know? And then I'm also, you're, you're seeing me probably move stuff in one click like this. It's important to note that I'm not moving it with the center axis, right? Because I want that body to stay flat. But if I start moving it with the center axis, like that looks right from this perspective, you know? But as soon as I move that camera, look at that. It's all like warped up right there, right? So make sure that you're moving it on each of these axes right there, the blue and the red only. Otherwise, you're going to get some weirdness with that up and down axis. So I used this this little, I think it's a yellow box. I don't know, as I said, I'm very colored one. So I use this like yellow one that moves the blue and the red at the same time. And there we go. So in case you're wondering how I'm moving those points so quickly into the correct position, that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm doing it. So I'm gonna multi-cut this one as well to make this other bowed out shape. And then let's just push this back in. There we go. Kind of getting like a peanut shape to that, to this uh, guitar right here. Now I want a little bit more definition in this. I want a little bit more definition. Like the, these, like the shape reads nicely from far away, but you zoom in and it looks like something that you'd find on like uh, the Nintendo 64, you know, very low poly. So let's go to multi-cut and let's give ourselves a multi-cut across like this for a little bit more definition there, right? And then as soon as you make one of those cuts, guys, just start refining that shape, right? Start refining it. If you if you wait too long, then then it, you're gonna end up with a bunch of multi-cuts that aren't refined looking and you wanna make sure that you're able to really get a, a clean shape in there before things get a bit too, uh, too crazy. I'm gonna get another cut in here as well. Fine, let's do one right here too. Let's get let's get fancy. See, I'm just dividing that up. I can do multi-cut and then just middle click right there and get that. And I'm going into vertex. And I realize that I that I'm going fast for you guys, but I, I'm I'm I just want to make sure that you're seeing it kind of happen in, in real time. Um, and we can always go back. We can always go back for it. Um, all right, and then I'm going to make a, a multi-cut here as well. And let's, let's do one on this side too. So we're going to get a nice, a nice smooth shape to this. Very nice. Very cool. Very cool. All right, next up is this, this hole right here. And Ivy completely nailed it in... Uh, the recommendation of using an extrude on this. Now, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you guys another bonus tool. This one's not super recommended, but I I love it. It's like a super cool tool in my opinion. Uh, if you select any amount of faces in here, you usually want to keep it like an even amount, right? Where it's like uh, a four a four by four or a two by two like this. If you go to um, edit mesh. There's a circularize button. And if you click that, boom, look at that. Isn't that super sick? 
just makes it a nice circle just immediately. So that's really cool. I love it. Um, I want this hole to be a bit bigger though. So I'm going to have to turn off. Like if I, if I scale it up right now, see how it's scaling it a little bit oblong. This is one of those situations where you need to turn off symmetry. So I'm going to turn off symmetry. I'm just going to select those again to get it dead center in that. Then I'm just going to scale it up. So now I just have a bigger, a bigger hole than, than before. And then we do Ivy's recommendation of control E and then offset. So we're going to offset that inward. And then I'm going to control E again and push it down. And then I'm going to just delete those. Boom. There you go. Simple. Freaking. Wait, where was the button for the circular? Oh, yeah, yeah. To make uh, absolutely. Let me go back. There we go. Return off symmetry. So just select those faces. And then you're going to go to uh, edit mesh, circularize. Oh, okay. This one right there. Yeah, always be aware that there's going to be some bonus tools that are hidden under one of those menus in there, you know. All right. So if you click that, boom. I have another question. When I move oh, yeah. the, like, the vertexes on, like, I guess my box, um, it doesn't look like that. Like, it, it the... <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of the rectangle stays like rectangular while like the top vert vertices like move and like I don't know. Are you sense. yeah, yeah, I think so. Um is it like does it look like this? So if I'm in vertex mode, does it look like this? Where you're moving this, you know, like this is cool. And then you look at the bottom and it's it hasn't moved. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm uh, left click drag and you see how I get this little selection box in there. Mm -hmm. I'm dragging that over those verts and I'm just selecting the one underneath it at the same time. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm approaching that. That way, that way I'm selecting both of those. Cause if you only go from the top view, then you left click it. See how that bottom verts not uh, highlighted. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not selected. So that that's why I'm dragging through so I can get um, both at the same time. Yeah. Okay. That was that was it. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So moving on. Uh, next up, after you get that circularized, you're going to control E. And then you're just going to scale that down. Control E. And I'm going to press W to go back into my move tool and just move that down and delete those faces. Simple. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right, so next up is, and feel free to, to take a peek at the guitar itself. Uh, if you go into face mode, you can double click on the neck and you can see that I was just, I, it's essentially just one piece in there. Oh man, my computer's getting real slow. Oh no. Okay, let's hope it survives the night. Um, so that's just one piece, right? So I'm just gonna, Go ahead and create a, another cube. There we go. And first step, let's get that line of symmetry going. Boom. Control middle click right there. Now, if I scale that down, I'm just going for the general shape, right, y'all? General shape. There we go. Looking good. Just the general shape, that's all. And I know it's not it's not a photorealistic guitar, you know, for sure, but that's fine. Learning purposes, you know. So there we go. Then now we can turn on symmetry again. Let's do some object X symmetry. Let's just move this bottom edge up to get like a little bit of a curve, right? Actually, let's save that. I don't want to do that just yet because I want to get this neck part first. Sorry about that, y'all. Didn't mean to be confusing. If we look at the geometry for this neck, you can see that there's this little, 
there's this little outcropping right here for where the strings insert. And normally the strings actually go to the tuning pegs, you know, but uh, you know, we don't need to go that extra. So what I'm gonna do is just start making that neck shape. So I'm gonna select these end ones and then press control E. So that's the, that's the neck right there. And then if we just press W, we can move that down. There you go. Guitar right there. And if I want that little part where the strings insert into, I need some geometry there, right? To extrude out. So let's just multi-cut that and then extrude, right? Boom, there we go. So now we have that. And next up, let's make some strings, right? So I first want to start pushing the, this back, right? Give myself some room. And oh, I also forgot that I want to get a nice rounded bottom on this. So let's move this like that. And then let's also give myself, I'm going to do some multi cuts on this. So there we go. And we can get an even more rounded shape to this, right? Nice. Very cool. If you wanted to go over here and drag through, to select these. You can move all these verts up here and then just make sure that these, oops, that these conform to that, uh, to the hole. There you go. That's looking cool. Uh, Mike. Yeah, what's up? But, but, uh, can you go back to the, to which were you, how you um, made the bottom part of the hill Rounder. This part? Yeah, that part on the, on, the, on the bottom. Yeah, right there. On the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just undo what I did. So I'm going to delete those edge loops right there. And then I'm going to move this edge loop uh, down. There we go. Very cool. So this is basically what we had just that like rectangular piece. And then since I have this middle geometry right here retaining that shape, if I move these outer ones up a little bit, see how it becomes pointy right there? Like that's, that's all right. It kind of sells yeah. the effect. But if we, if we add some edge loops there and then select those new ones that we've made, we can really round that out. See that? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Nice noise. And then again, you can always refine the shape of these bad boys right here and get, get a nice curve to that. All right. So next up, the end of this neck has a little bit of a, like a bow to it right there. You see that? See that for like on on like the, the tuning board or whatever. So in order to get that geometry right, we're gonna need to get some multi cuts in there because we need verts to maintain that silhouette of the object when we're describing that surface. We need them there. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode. Remember to drag through your mesh. Boom to select at the bottom as well, and then just grab those and push them out a little bit. Push them out a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna go into multi-cut mode again. Let's divide it up a little bit more. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just a, a few subdivisions won't hurt us. They could be annoying if you add too many, but this is not too many for right now. Boom. There we go. So now we have that same sort of effect going on. I like it. I like what's going on. Very cool stuff. Uh, next up, let's make some strings, right? Now we could make a string out of a cube, right? We could. We could do it. Like you saw me turn it into a cylinder before, but you know, I'm not going to bother with that, you know? So let's just scale this. And I'm going to scale it down on the blue and the red at the same time with this little box in between. Just get a nice thin string shape right there, right? Let's scale it up. And then I'm going to rotate. 
Now you can either type in the exact rotation value um, or you can hold J and kind of rotate on 90 degrees right there. See that? So if you hold J while you're rotating, see how it snaps to different angles? So that's very useful for situations like this where you're like, oh, I want to rotate by 90 degrees. Why they put it on the key J, I'll never understand. That's such a weird key to have a hockey on. Like what? Kind of madman creates a system like that, but you know, it is Maya, so understandable. Um, here we go. Let's scale that out. There we go. So that now that string is right there. It's kind of inserting through. Let's push it back into the little board right there. Um, and then next up, you just control D and then move over. Control D, move over. Control D, move over. Control D, move over. And Control D and move over. Boom. So nothing, nothing too crazy there. It's just a bunch of different strings kind of duplicated and placed into position there. Um, all right. Now let's do this little simple guy right here. He's just a cube that's like kind of long and has a bunch of divisions on it, right? He's just another cube. So let's do that. I'm going to turn off symmetry while I'm creating this axis of symmetry. Remember that? I'm going to turn it back on. Boom. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. And then we're going to multi cut this guy up. Boom. Boom. See that? Now this one's like actually pretty simple, you know, like that wasn't too many steps. And then if you look at mine, I just cut it up a, a bit more and then refined that, the silhouette of all those pieces. But yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty easy peasy for that guy. Um, then next up is the tuning pegs. Tuning pegs are a little bit, a little bit more difficult, a little bit more difficult. So let's get one of these. Oops, let's turn off object X symmetry. There we go. Any thoughts on how I created this object? Anyone have any idea? What is your guys' theoretical approach to this? You started with the cube, of course. <laughs> yep, classic, yeah. Um, and then you... sorry, what was that? You combined different shapes. No, this is all this is all one shape in here. All if one that's shape. The case I am thinking that you just did the circular extrude thing, but instead of going inward, you went outward. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Jesse is correct. Jesse is correct. So. In order to make one of these tuning pegs, I'm just going to not even put it next to the guitar, really. I'll, I'll just make it in its own space and then scale it later. But uh, right here, I'm going to model it. So, boom, I'm just going to cut it down the center, right? Uh, now, this is going to be our axis of symmetry this time, you know, because if you look at it, it's symmetrical in, in that side. But um, you don't need to worry about that too much. So I'm just going to extrude out these sides, right? The sides of the, the tuning peg. I'm going to do control E. Remember, we have to be in face mode for that. Uh, control E, and then I'm just going to push away with that blue axis that it gives me. Boom. So that's, this is essentially the, the kind of t top of the T shape that we're making right here. So I'm going to scale that down. And there you go. So you can see exactly how that came about. Next up, we're going to go in and select these. And this is exactly what Jesse was talking about, how we're going to extrude. And then we're going to offset inward. Wait, let's see. There we go. We're going to offset inward. Remember, control shift and then left click and drag on this word is like the easiest way to, to sort of modify this stuff. Next up, I'm going to hit you guys with 
the circular rise again. Boom. There we go. So that's super dope. You just simple. And then you just extrude that out again. See that? So pretty, pretty. It's it's it looks complicated at first, but like once you get the the hang of it, like that, uh, it's, it just feels nice to be able to make that shape like that. Uh, and then to get it all over the the board, let's just scale it down into a reasonable size. And then I'm just gonna in object mode because remember whenever I'm on, whenever you see this green highlight, you know that I'm in object mode. And then I'm just gonna duplicate it all over. Let's move it a little bit, give ourselves some, some space. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of like random rotation because they're always tuned to some random rotation. And then I'm going to select all three of those, duplicate those over. And I'm going to, I, I haven't deselected them. I'm just moving that same duplicated shape. And I'm going to hold, I'm going to press E. And then I'm gonna hold J. I'm gonna rotate through that. See that? Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> They're going wild. And then you get that set up right there. And you can rotate them again and then give it'll give them another sort of random feeling rotation. There you go. So very cool um, stuff that we're dealing with there. Uh, so what's and J for again? J snaps uh, the the rotation, right? So if I if I'm in my rotate tool and then I hold J, watch this cube. See how it's snapping to different oh, okay. rotation, right there. Uh, yeah. The alternative is just if I'm not holding J, see how it's like smoothly rotating there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Alrighty, so that's the guitar. That's the guitar right there. Not too, not not too difficult. Um, of course, this one I made it so uh, if you press three, then it it smooths out nicely. Oh, everything except for this little guy right there. He just looks like a mustache or something now. Um, so let's. I'm just gonna show you if you wanted to create some retaining edge loops on this. Remember, I'm just, since we have clean topology, we can just double click all of our edges, right? We can just double click all these guys. And then we can go in and bevel. Oop. Let's do two segments. And there you go. So now when I press three again, look at that, that shape is retained. Oh, I missed some over here. No problem though. Um, but yeah. So lots of cool stuff. This is when we can start making some real shapes in modeling and like actually get some cool results. But but yeah, so that's good. The guitar. Uh, I'm gonna head over to the hand. I know I know you guys aren't done with the guitar. That's why that's why it's homework, you know. So uh, you can work on it at your own time. Um, but I'm gonna move on over to the hand, and then I I'm, I'll I'll stick around and answer some questions after. So the hand is a little bit, a little bit of an upgrade in, in difficulty, right? So I give you guys a cube, another cube, classic cube. I'm just going to duplicate it and move it over here just so I can get it closer to the hand. And yeah, I'm not going to lie that the hand is, is definitely a step up in difficulty. The guitar is difficult as well, but for different reasons. Hand is difficult because it's just like, oh man, how do I describe a hand at this point? You know, like I don't know, I don't know many many tools. You know, so let's let's just break it down. So you'll see that you have a bunch of subdivisions right here on top, right? Now it's going to take a little while, but just like start learn to start counting these. You know, so see how I have like one two three four five six seven eight on top and then those kind of lead into the fingers right so we have that amount on top uh and then so you can you can just tell that you need to add that many to your side as well right 
you're gonna, you're gonna have you're gonna end up with that same amount on your your end. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna go straight to eight on top. I'm gonna keep it at four for now, just so I can kind of roughly block out the that sort of you like you know when you like look at your hand you can see that it kind of arcs back from the knuckle you know so I'm gonna create that general shape. There we go. So we're gonna we're gonna do the fingers first and then the thumb. It's gonna be our approach. Here we go. Let's move this up. So now, like currently, you you can you can kind of see where where this is all gonna happen. So if I extruded this out, you can see that this is gonna be the thumb. I know this does not look good, but then if you extrude this out, it's gonna be the index finger. If you extrude this one. Boom, and then these two, boom, you know. So you can see how that hand is being created. It's just a matter of kind of bringing it there, you know. So my, my approach is gonna be to, oh, let me undo all these extrusions. Ugh, gross, there we go. Um, my approach is gonna be make like a little base hand, right, and then, Create, eat, uh, create one finger and then duplicate it, right? Because I don't want to be stuck doing the same finger over and over. Like that's going to be, it's going to be uh, a little bit torturous. So let's, let's avoid that, right? So I'm going to show you a new tool. It's called Extract. I think we actually did it the other day, come to think of it. But uh, it, it basically will separate out a piece of geo. I'm first going to get that cut along the middle. And then now I'm going to also make that that extra cut on these knuckles, right? So now we have eight divisions across the top. I'm going to move this in. I'm going to move this in to round it off, right? Get nice and round there. Next up, I'm going to extrude this out. Boom. Let's extrude that does not look perfect by any means, as it should not. But I'm going to move these points to be kind of finger shaped. So there's just an extrusion. And then I'm moving this those edges, right? Just getting a finger shape right there. And then I'm going to, I'm going to scale these down, right? Because our fingers get smaller as they go to the tip. Not by a, a drastic amount, but by a little bit, you know? So let's do that. And I wanna start modeling this finger, but I don't wanna have a bunch of just, I don't wanna have it connected to this hand anymore, right? So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go into edit mesh, extract. Boom. And what that does is if you go into object mode now, Look at that, that's a separate object from that hand. See how we just took faces of this, of this hand and then just split it off again to show that. Uh, if I select those faces, edit mesh, extract, it's gonna split that off. Uh, Mike? Yeah, what's up? The difference between extract and separate is that extract keeps it on the same basic um the same like i, I want to say layer but it's not layer it's like, it's like the same like shape right um they're they're different shapes with extract right yeah so, no i, yeah. I don't know separate if like they become two, two two different forms or two different i'm i'm not sure what the term is for yeah yeah I, two two different uh objects right yeah yeah so uh i'll, I'll just go over that again uh, because it is an interesting uh, concept, right? So I now have two objects in Maya. You can see that they're um, they're right here. If I one second, let me let me delete all by type history. Boom. Let me get these out of here. Boom. There we go. So there there are two separate objects in Maya, right? Now, yeah. if I select both of them, like if I drag select over both of them and do mesh combine. Look at that. So now it's one object. See that? 
polysurface 10? Yes. So what separate does is if there is like a gap separating the actual meshes of that object, if I do mesh separate, boom, look at that. See how it's, oh, okay. see how it's, it's divided them again. Now extract is a little bit different than separate. It, uh, one second, let me keep going until we, oh my God, I did a lot of selecting here. Um, there we go. So extract takes something that is just one shape. Like these meshes are completely fused together. Like they're like these verts are fused together. What it does is it'll take your selection. It'll split that off and then make it a, a, a different object as well. So it, it makes it two objects and splits the mesh, you know? Okay. Uh, Edit mesh extract right there. See that? So now, yeah. now those those verts right there have been split into two verts, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that would be helpful in that whole work. Yeah. 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 No, it's a, it's a good tool. It's a good tool. That's why I show this method for creating the fingers. Um. All right. So now let's just start polishing up the shape of this finger, right? Let's just polish this finger up. So I am gonna make subdivisions like if you look at your finger you'll notice that your knuckles have like a little bit of a different shape than the rest of the finger they kind of bulge out in in this profile um and they go up in this one and they have that little divot on the bottom right so i want some i want some multi-cuts along those digits and then i'm just going to go ahead and, and i'm just going to go ahead and, and start moving those inward a little bit actually let's let's get some retaining shapes right here so i'm gonna i'm gonna make two cuts on either side of that first uh multi-cut i did right there here we go and i'm just gonna make that little divot and i'm gonna push it up right here and i'm gonna push it out over here so i'm just gonna scale it a little bit outward right there very nice so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that for this one as well so i'm gonna move that up very cool. Move this up as well. And I'm going to scale this out just a little bit, just slightly, just enough, you know. Um, so nothing super fancy. Um, and then I'm going to go into multi cut. And because if you look at your finger, it kind of bulges out at the end and then kind of comes into a little point. Now everyone's fingers are different. So don't take my fingers to be the, uh, the law of how fingers look, you know, so um, always look at your reference. Really recommend looking up everything that you're modeling, everything that you're sculpting as well, you know, everything you're drawing, everything that you're animating. Dude, like, honestly, reference is uh, basically cheating. It's just so, so good. And I, I, I don't, I don't like calling it cheating because it's like, a fucking requirement like you you need to be looking at reference when you're making art guys so please do please do here we go very nice very nice and it's looking sick it's looking sick y'all boom finger right there Almost done. Uh, I did a little bit of extra detailing on the fingernails. Got my nails did. So let's go in here and go to mesh display. I'm going to soften edge. And then let's move all these bad boys. I'm just going to try to soften up that, that shape. I might do it. I might go a little bit extra, get, get a multi-cut in there too. Because I want, I, want I want this front shape of the finger to be just nice looking. And it's kind of it's kind of coming up to an abrupt stop right there. So I'm trying to be a little bit more detailed. There we go. And then uh, if I wanted to make fingernail, I'm gonna do that by extruding 
might see where where the fingernail start. I feel like it's, I feel like it would start on this edge loop right here. So let's move that back. Let's give me, let's give myself a little bit more room for the actual nail. And it's just an extrude, right? Extrude, scale down. And then I'm gonna rotate it a little bit and I'm gonna extrude out and then rotate that down again, boom. If you want to be even more precise, feel free to go in. And first I want to fix the angle of this. It feels like it got like crumpled it downward a little bit strangely. It's nice. There we go. And then we can extrude out these faces. Well, there we go. So that's how you make uh, make one finger. You can spend a while on that, um, but we're gonna be making more organic shapes in the future. And remember, mesh display, soft edge. Well, I'll, I'll give you that. Kind of don't like how far forward I pushed that fingernail, but whatever, that's fine. So now let's uh, set up the rest of our fingers, right? So simple, boom, control D move. And then I'm gonna also modify center pivot just because I don't, I don't wanna be moving from some weird pivot point right there. I'm gonna scale this out, right? Cause the middle finger is the longest of the, uh, of the, uh, of the fingers. I don't know if that actually changes depending on your genes. I wonder if some people have like a longer ring finger than the middle finger. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure if that's universal. Uh, and then I'm gonna scale this down a little bit too. And then I'm gonna duplicate that again and move it over. And, oh, there we go. Also, additionally, if you look at your hand, just like in a rest pose, it's not really even, right? Like, see how my this part kind of droops a little bit more. So feel free to move your fingers down a little bit as that uh, shape continues on, and then we'll start getting that ready to hook up onto the regular hand. So let's delete these because remember we're describing the surface, right? I don't want to have a bunch of faces that we just connect over in here. So I'm going to delete these. I'm going to go into four mode so I can actually see them easier. There we go. And then I'm gonna start going through because it's a lot of just grunt work from here. Um, I kind of want to bring this overall shape downward a little bit. So I'm gonna use soft select and, and tools that we're learning. Very nice. Boom. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to push this in. I'm gonna push this one up. What's the key for soft select? That one is B. So B toggles it on and off. Very useful one to have. And then what do you hold down to increase its like radius? Uh, you hold B and middle click drag left and right. Okay. And then that'll increase or decrease the fall off. So there we go. So now the way that we are, we're gonna attach this is a little bit different, right? Because we, we've set up our points pretty well, you know? Cause I only have, if you look at the top of the, each of these shapes, I have like the same amount right here, but the inside, like the webbing, that's gonna be harder to create, right? It's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So we need to set that up and I'll show you guys how. I'm gonna scale down these these fingers a little bit. This one's gonna be a bit strange. I need to move it. There we go. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit strange, right? Um, and I'm gonna actually. I, I might as well show you guys display layers now. Uh, in your channel box, if you select objects. Um, you can add them to a display layer to kind of uh, make them turn on and off visually so they don't crowd your scene. It's a nice way of organizing your scene. Um, so if I select all my fingers, if I go to this little create a new layer and assign select object button, boom, you can do that. Uh, 
And then on that layer, it has a little V. This is basically visibility. So if you toggle that on and off, it'll just be out of the way. So I want to get those out of the way for now. Uh, again, you could, you don't need to do that. You could just kind of move them down. But I thought I'd just show you guys the display layers in case you're, in case any of you are like organizational themes, then go for it, you know. Now, the way that we're going to keep, uh, the way that we're going to create this webbing is by bridging across from the top to the bottom to create the webbing, right? So what I'm going to do is go to that the, these two spans between the fingers, and I'm going to go back to my modeling toolkit. I'm going to do bridge. Boom, perfect. Now the problem is, is that if you look at the if I turn back on my my finger, I can't bridge across here, right? Like there's this like polygon that's super in the way and annoying. So what we need to do is multi-cut on that polygon a few more times, right? So again, I'm going to go to my uh, channel box. I'm going to turn off the visibility on, this, on these bad boys. And I'm going to add a multi-cut. And I'm going to scale that inward. Boom, look at that. So that's a really, really tiny little, little multi-cut right there. And I'm going to bevel it out and kind of move it down a little bit. Because that's how fingers... Kind of look, the webbing is definitely like on the lower side. So it's not super anatomically correct. It would have to be like down here, uh, but I don't want to mess up my topology that much for it right now. Um, and let's turn those fingers back on, right? So now if I'm like, oh, nice, I want to merge these together. First, I'd have to mesh combine and then I'd have to bridge across, right? Easy bridge, easiest bridge of my life. Ah. Poly bridge requires equal number of border edges. So if you count them up, this finger right now has eight. So it has two on top, two on bottom, two on left and right. So that's, that's eight total. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can't quite bridge right there. We need two more multi-cuts right there. So say no more multi-cuts you will get so let's create those now i'm just going to scale those move them out a little bit and move these down right and scale them in so now you can see kind of how those are going to hook up and let's move this back right there and then now we can double click this boom eight edges right there into another eight edges, boom, bridge. There you go. Remember for bridge, they have to be the same object. So you have to select the finger and uh, the, the palm and you have to do um, mesh combine. They have to be the same object after you extract off that finger. Then it just comes, to, it comes down to, to polishing up like these vertex positions. So we move this like here, let me move this up. Make it not as extreme. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to repeat the process so you guys can see all of the fingers happening. So, um, so let's get this next finger into position. I'm going to. I'm just going to move it down, and then just so you guys can see which uh, which webbing I'm creating. So this is going to be between these two fingers right here. Remember, you got to bridge across these two spans that are that are basically hooking up to these spots right there. We're kind of bridging them across and then, they're, and then we're redirecting their edge flow by doing these multi cuts. So I'm going to multi cut this now. I'm just going to do two at a time. I'm not scared. I'm not scared, my friends. Here we go. So that's that's looking better. That's looking better. And then this, we're probably gonna need to bring this out a little bit. I suppose we could use soft select to kind of give us a little bit of a nicer shape there. Then we can use this and push in on that. There we go. So that's one more webbing done. And then this is another webbing. Let's do another bridge. Then let's do a multi cut. And then let's do a multi cut on top and bottom of that. And then let's just scale that in, dude. 
Let's just scale that in, simple. Let's scale this down here to kind of get it more level as well. Ooh, this is looking a little bit strange. Let's rotate that. Actually, let's, let's do some soft select stuff to kind of get more organicness in there. Again, soft select, fantastic for organic sort of appeal. There we go. Let's get this a little bit more reasonable. There we go. So now all of the all the spots are ready for the fingers. Whether or not I got them to the right size is going to be we're going to find out in a little bit um, because the fingers probably will be too thick. Um, but that's that's essentially the setup for it. And then let's just go about attaching them again. Let's do this bad boy and this guy and then this guy right there. So selecting all of them, let's do actually let's select all the fingers and then the palm and do a mesh combine. Boom, there you go. And then now it's just a simple matter of doing bridge. Let's just bridge across. Whoops. There we go. Nice. And then some of it, now it's just massaging birds, you know, got to just go in, sort of get them to be in the right orientation right here. And yeah, that's the magic. That's the magic, y'all. I'm gonna bring this up higher because it's a little bit, a little bit strange looking up there. Then we can bring these back as well. And there we go. But yeah, so that's it for that. And then it's on to creating thumb. Uh, very similar to the rest of the, the hand, in fact. Um, very similar. Uh, simply because it's just going to be an extrusion, right? It's just going to be some extruding to be done there. Let's just make sure that all of our fingers are looking a little bit reasonable on the inside of that webbing. Very nice. Now I don't need to go in and modify all of these, but uh, sometimes I just get absorbed into it because the, the modeler in me. Um, all right, so next we need to make the, the thumb, right? So now we have, we have a pretty good base of this. I'm going to make sure I save. I recommend everyone else save as well. Boom. Just save your work, y'all. Whatever you got done. Whatever you got. Now, I don't, I don't expect you to have a lot done on like the guitar or the hand, you know, but uh, for sure, some of the first stuff you might have, might have some work. You don't want to lose that. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and do a mesh display soften edge just to see because I don't like this. I don't like this little appeal that we got going on here. Mesh display, soften edge. There we go. Look at that. It's a lot better. Um, so the, the thumb, actually very simple, you know, it's just going to be extruding out the thumb, you know. Pulling this back, kind of making a round shape right there. 
I'm going to go ahead and make a multi cut across as well. So now we have all that. And let's, I'm going to try edit mesh circular. Let's, let's do that, you know, because the thumb ends up as like a circular shape, right? Not, it's not perfectly circular, but it's, it's, it is very circular. So there we go, like there. And then I'm just going to extrude it out more. And the thumb takes some definite wiggling around to kind of get it looking right. Because we have that opposable thumb, it kind of rests a little bit lower than the other ones. And then I, I suppose we do have to make the, uh, the rest of the thumb like we can't just duplicate a, a one of the fingers, which we could, because the thumb thumb looks a little bit different. It's going all, all off on these different axes. Let's do this. And boom. So this, the rest of this will just be me refining this thumb. Um, you already saw me do the, the finger, so I'm not gonna go for like the fingernail and stuff, but you can see my process for, for sort of polishing up that shape still. Um, and I'm kind of just moving these points. You, you always have to uh, move that camera around your object, right? Like don't, don't just look at it from one angle. See how I'm going from these like these side angles and like I'm seeing that this vert is like too far in there. I'm always going from different angles. You have to see it. You have to rotate that camera around. That's why that's why that mouse is mandatory because if you couldn't pan or or if your camera controls are inhibited, then you're you're done for, you know. So there we go. I'm not gonna polish it up more than that. Uh, the rest is just kind of going through and uh, getting some general shapes in here, right? And I'm just trying to get that palm shape right there. Get a little bit of meat there. Let's get some, some on the bottom as well, you know. Kind of push that out. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Get that in there. Let's do this. All sorts of stuff. You can get that, that hand looking nice. This is where like reference would definitely come into play, you know. I'm trying to get something looking good. Oh, see that? Just getting like that little bit of bone structure in there, you know. I'm trying to move this up, down. But yeah, so that's the hand. That is the hand. I'll just do a mesh display, soften edge at the end. There we go. Uh, I kind of rushed through that because, you know, I don't want to go on too long about this. You guys are, I'm sure you guys have reached your limit for knowledge, but, uh, but yeah, because this is, this is one of the harder lectures of the class because I kind of have to throw you guys in the deep end, like I said. Um, don't worry, there will still be hard lectures <laughs> then we're not going to be able to escape that uh but you know that's 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 what's going to happen when uh you are in one of two uh cg classes on campus you know like honestly we should we should really split this up into like uh computer modeling computer animation and like rigging you know like they should split them up into those types of classes but we don't have the uh the budget or student body interest for that, unfortunately. So, or like student body uh, enrollment for that, which I guess is interesting, but, um, but yeah. So that's a tragedy, but I mean, you guys have already made it so far, you know, like you've already, you've, you've already learned a lot and I'm excited to see what you guys did for the, uh, for the, the, the environments. That's gonna be cool. And then um, last up, 
uh, if you want to model your own shape, then feel free. You might get a little, like, might get a little bit of a bonus. Might get a little bit of a bonus, my friends. So, model your own shape at the end, and uh, yeah, that'll be really cool to see. Um, okay, so that was a lot of stuff. Uh, the hand part's gonna it. It's just gonna be rewatching the lecture. You know, that's why that's why I do a. a a walkthrough of this on my YouTube channel. Uh, let's see if uh, let's see if I can find it for you guys. Obstacle. Here we go. So I have, oh, sorry. It's gonna start you at a weird spot in the video with that link, but uh, that's just, it, I go through the entire process in 28 minutes. Um, yeah, so feel free to review that. Feel free to review the uh, lecture as well. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. Uh, that'll probably be tomorrow. Um, if you want to like message me on discord to remind me or something, if I forget, then that feel free to, uh, but that'll be uploaded tomorrow. Um, well, yeah, uh, if, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise you are free to go. I understand that everyone's brain is probably, <laughs> it's probably mush at this point. Like it's, it's a lot of tools that I throw at you, but, um, we got to get moving into ZBrush, you know, so. So yeah, any questions for uh, the hand or the guitar before I go? Um, so this exercise is homework for next week? Yeah, so get, get this done by next week. That way we can move on into uh, uh, ZBrush. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and again, if you guys run into any problems, uh, post on the Discord. Uh, in like the help please channel um, or DM me. Uh, if you could send like a screenshot of your problem, then I, I'd be, that, that would, that'd be pretty helpful. You know, uh, ooh, where do you got to post and help please? Uh, how did we extract? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, this class is recorded, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent it is. In fact, it, this is one of like the few classes where I feel like online might potentially be easier because uh, just by virtue of being able to record every single lecture, you know, um, to extract though, to go over that question, select your object, hold right click and go into face mode and then select whatever faces you want to have be a separate object, you know? So if I just wanted only these to be a separate object, then I could, and I'd go to, with those selected, I can just go to edit mesh, extract. Boom. And it might, it might not look like anything happened, but if you just click off and then click back on, you'll see uh, your, your faces are right here. But I usually go straight into object mode and I start moving them around. Uh, your pivot point might be super messed up. So remember, you can always modify center pivot right there. See that? So that's how you can split that bad boy up. And there you go. Uh, any other questions? Any questions? In, in I'm sure chat? I have many, but I'll just probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, review the the tapes. You know, it's it, like this is this is a hard one. This is a hard one. This is like a, a brand new stuff. Um, but yeah, also yeah, feel free to post in the Discord because you know it's it's fun when you guys are able to help each other. It also helps like teaching others solidifies lessons in you too. So like it, it's really cool when you guys collaborate in there. Um, I have a yeah. question. Yeah, what's up? Um, ha, ha, what's a good size for the for the soft brush? Oh, what's a good size? Uh, it depends, you know. Okay. So let me get this fused together. You know, there we go. Undo extract. So if I if I wanted to like select, if I wanted like kind of thicken this finger up, I could select all these and then just press B. 
you know? And then I'm looking at this uh, fall off, right? So this yellow, the yellow color is where it's like affecting the most, you know? See that? Yeah. So I usually would scale it up. I, I'm holding B and middle click and I'm just kind of visually guessing like where, where that'll end up based on that fall off. See how I, I kind of left the bottom mostly intact, you know, like these aren't getting touched at all. So I'm just, I mean, that's, that's kind of like what I'm looking out for most. I'm just looking at the, that fall off range. And like, if I wanted these knuckles to pop out a little bit more, maybe I'd scale it back a little bit for this, you know? So it's not as it's, it's not going into the fingers as much. It's kind of staying back there. You see? So uh, that, that's usually what I'm looking at. I hope that helps. Yes, it does. Thank you. Nice. Do your wrists ever get sore or like hurt from time to time doing all this modeling? No, oddly enough. I don't know. Maybe I, I must like have like ergonomic clicking or something. <laughs> I will tell you what did make my wrist sore though was traditional animation, like back in college, like that, like destroyed my wrists. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily I found the, the world of 3d and uh hopefully i'll introduce you guys to to the world of 3d as well you know but yeah any other questions All right, if there's no other questions, then you guys are free to go. Again, pop in the Discord if you run into problems. I'm sure you guys will. That is that is to be expected. Don't don't be hard on yourself because this is confusing stuff. It is confusing. And the 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 best way to learn is just put in the hours and do some trial and error, you know. So be kind with yourselves and be kind to each other, y'all. Have a have a good one. I'll see you guys next you. week. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you. So, Professor? Hello? <laughs> oh, you, you barely caught me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. So um, I have a question, but it's not about the homework or anything. It's about oh. the BFA that I'm that I I noticed there's a due date due date now and um I never created a profile um like a portfolio for my artwork ever and I never done it before and my biggest question is what softwares do you use to create an online profile I mean oh okay um portfolio. yeah portfolio yeah, yeah um there's a bunch of like it, it, to be fair, I haven't done it in a while. There could be some new websites and stuff, but um, I I used Squarespace and uh, what is it like Wixit? I think was what it was called. Those are the two that I used, and they they were fine. They were fine. Uh, to be honest, it's it's not so much like what website you use. It's more about just the content of your portfolio, right? Like if you're drawing like a freaking badass, then like. You're gonna make it through, like no, no problem. You know? So, so focus on the work. Um, I will say, in terms of like presentation, always. Uh, oh, what what kind of portfolio is it? Is it gonna be mostly hand drawn, or is it like animated stuff? It's or, or mostly animation, because I'm trying to enter in the BFA animation. Oh yeah, and yep. <laughs> I never created a portfolio before. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Um, so uh, when you're assembling your portfolio the the best rule of thumb is start with your strongest work right start with your strongest and then end with your second strongest so you're going to basically bookend with like your strongest pieces right uh does that make sense yes okay then in the middle you'll have like your your ones that are like aren't as good you know but like are still like presentable you know so uh don't show any bad work as well I'd rather no. see, yeah, like I, I'd rather see like less higher quality work than like a lot of work. And then like some of them are bad, you're like oh, what's going on here, you know? So, so make sure you uh, do some 
like uh, omit the bad ones like do some do some editing you know so but yeah because yeah, the biggest issue that I, that I had was okay what software do you use like powerpoint or like something to put it all together oh oh I, uh, yeah is it, i've been it, keeping track like i have been saving and keeping track of my work mm -hmm. it's just that i don't know how to present it or combine mm -hmm. it online <laughs> um if it's if it's all animated clips then i would use a uh, adobe premiere it's very easy to learn it's basically you drag and drop your like video files into the program and then you just put them on the timeline okay mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yeah give it a go because um i'm i'm you guys have like that discounted creative cloud access so uh mm -hmm. i would just go ahead and download that and, and start using it. it's like it's amazing it's it's really it's really simple you just drag and drop and then you can just kind of edit them on the timeline and, and it'll be it'll be really nice also to um because i noticed my adobe account or the cloud count for the adobe it expired so who do i contact to like fix that oh weird it expired i didn't know yeah. that, that was possible it, it was weird because um my very first class when i came here to long beach um mm -hmm. i had to purchase a 30 dollar i don't know what it was like some trial or whatever for the adobe and mm -hmm. that's what i did and, yeah. and somehow it expired because it's under the like oh. accounts of my schooling <laughs> okay <laughs> so school try um do you know the sso like the single sign-on thing um i don't think so, I so I go to <laughs> I don't think so. go to sso let me see sso.csulb.edu so i just linked it in the chat go to that website and then log in with your student id and then it should bring you into this like portal that has like all of your stuff for you um there will be a tab in there i think i have mine open actually so i can just screen share um uh, here we go uh, oh i can't <laughs> i was gonna say i can't click on it I think it's like, uh, let me see if I could copy. Let me exit the screen. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, eventually, if you get through the sign-on, you'll see a screen like this. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm what I'm looking at here, um, mm -hmm. and, and there should be like campus software somewhere. Let's see, like one of these tabs is called campus software. There we go, software details. Okay. So click on that, and then you should be able to find. Uh, you might be able to find a discounted Creative Cloud one. Um, mm -hmm through that if not then let me know uh yeah so you can like select the software and look at that creative cloud subscription right there so so you should be you should have some sort of access to like a discounted rate um mm -hmm. but yeah let me know if not otherwise you can get it you might be able to get it through like adobe itself uh but we'll we'll, we'll see so so first try to go to the campus software and stuff and then yeah um but yeah so other than that, um, I'm not sure exactly. I'd have to like email someone else. I know there's like an IT desk as well that you can you can email and see if they have discounted rates on stuff. But but yeah. All okay. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck with your with your uh, creative cloud adventures, and uh, good luck with the portfolio too. That's a it's a big moment in the uh, in the uh, school system. It really is because um, they just letting me know that I had two classes left to graduate with the studio of arts, but I'm like, I don't want to do studio of arts. I want to do the VFA, but it's yeah. like, I wish you guys didn't separate the two or else I wouldn't have this mess. Yeah, right. <laughs> they, I, I think, I don't know, they have, I think it's because Long Beach has that like, like 
weird stat they're like oh we have like a 98 percent graduation rate or whatever and it's because like because you guys are like forcing people through the program like what are you <laughs> what are you expecting <laughs> so well, that's that's my biggest issue because it's like well i am doing it for animation but they're like saying oh if you're doing animation you should go for the bfa and i'm yeah. all like okay what's the difference between studio of arts and bfa are they gonna hire me or not gonna hire me because i don't have it yeah like, it, i'm just it, that the whether or not they're going to hire you doesn't matter on like your degree it's just like it matters on your portfolio more than anything so um but like i will say that the i recommend going for the bfa because it gives you time because like you said they're going to be like oh time to move on to the studio art thing but instead you're like no i want to i want to be in it for uh the bfa you know so so yeah to prove a lot more than just because i graduated from community college and community college um they didn't even t like tell me about portfolios or how to like yeah yeah they don't they don't do mess around with that much. yeah no i went to community college too and i was like yeah it's a little bit lackluster but hey you know it's nice and affordable so yeah so that's good. <laughs> well thank you professor yeah no problem <laughs> No problem. Have a good one. You too. I'll see you okay. later.